GNCC returns to racertv.com for round number four of the 2024 season. And boy, how about it? After three rounds of racing, Bryson Neal stays perfect in conditions. A lot questioned whether or not he could get a win. He goes out and he proves the naysayers wrong. Who can step up and stop this man? I love the energy we saw to Walker Fowler in the post-race interview. The man is determined. He's sick and tired of seeing B. Neal, the Bidwell Bullet, grab these wins. He wants a piece of the pie. Can he do it here today? Tie Chris Borch on the all-time wins list and put himself in the direction he wants to go to be the all-time winningest rider in GNCC history. And how about it for Wyatt Wilkin in his sophomore season of racing makes his first XC1 podium with a third-place finish in Georgia. All that and more starts right here, right now on Racer TV. Good afternoon and welcome to round number four of the 2024 Progressive Grand National Cross Country Racing Series presented by Specialized, your AMA National Championship. We are here for round number four in Society Hill, South Carolina for the FMF Camp Coker Bullet. Welcome back, Johnny Gallagher. Hey, Johnny, we had a little bit of time off after that big, long streak that we're on the road. Georgia, Florida, no rest in between. Well, the guys have their rest. We're here to race today. What's it going to look like? Man, you know, this track is uh, its one of a kind here in GNCC racing. Obviously, with the uh, the mix of sand and clay that we don't really get anywhere else, it shapes up to be incredibly rough. It's really going to test the fitness and ultimately just the determination of these guys throughout the day. Well, we had uh, another race uh, in, in Georgia. Uh, wild, wild weather we had. It was it was a mutter, a different kind of mutter than what the bike guys, I guess, experienced last year. ATVs, they, they got out on the, the easy end of that. But uh, nonetheless, the result was the same. Bryce and Neil, still a perfect three for three to start the year. Yeah, and not only a perfect three for three, but a very exuberant man at the very finish much. line. Uh, the most we've seen him celebrate, even more so than winning a championship. And I think what that came down to is him really getting a monkey off his back. Uh, he's kind of been known as the guy that can't get it done in mud yep. races. And uh, he proved just two weeks ago in Georgia that that is not the case anymore and you know if that he's figured out a way to strengthen his only weakness oh, yeah <laughs> that's really bad news for the rest of the, the crew and uh, those trying to beat him yeah it's a scary thought let's talk about the guy who got second walker fowler uh i made a note after the end of that race and maybe you agree with me maybe you're like no i've seen this coming you're closer to him than i am but it looked like championship caliber uh walker fowler in my eyes of i got second today i'm not happy about it I want to be first place. I got to figure out how to get up there and make it happen. Well, I think we've seen the, the re-evolution of Walker Fowler, if you will. Uh, we obviously see, saw him last year just happy to be back in racing. Yep. Uh, just And then when we saw him get on a podium, you know, that was a big step. We saw him grab a win. That was a huge step. Uh, but there was always, at least for him, an asterisk on that win. Obviously, Bryce and Neil having some struggles that yep. day. But each round so far in 2024, we've seen Walker Fowler get ever so much closer yep. to Bryce and Neil. You know, starting off with a few minutes back and even in that third position, at round one then i believe it was 47 seconds at round two and i mean inches at round yep. three so as much as you could say those are steps i think he's just wanting to get back to the place where he's the guy yep. uh and wants to start winning races and the frustration was definitely very noticeable so he, he's going to be coming to play here today cannot wait to see what he's capable of and then how about it for wyatt wilkin a rookie last season his sophomore year this year uh, had a sensational race with his first podium of his uh, XC1 career. Yeah, and not just a podium that he kind of backed into. I mean, he was up front, battled with Bryce and Neal. We had so many, uh, you know, shots of them throughout the race, kind of trading positions back and forth. But he really did the smart thing, kind of chased Bryce and uh, throughout the race and distanced himself from the rest of the yeah. field, a lot like what we saw Josh Merritt do at round one. And it was it held all the way to the finish line. Uh, obviously got zapped up. Walker put in a, a really good sprint there yeah. at the end and, and closed the gap. But uh, Wyatt never panicked and, you know, you said it emotional yeah uh, and it was really cool to see this is a kid that's come up from nowhere in GNCC as a youth rider that wasn't winning his class and winning sure. championships he's just worked at it and uh, we saw
saw that emotion and he said it's no longer just about me with my yep. nose to the grindstone grinding away like now everybody can see the fruits of my labor yeah and it well earned and i don't think that's the last we see white wilkin making podiums and, and fighting for wins eventually uh the rest of the pack johnny uh we need to see some things out of john or uh, john John Glotta, excuse me, uh, Josh Merritt, you know, he wants to get things turned around. He expects to be a podium guy as well. Yeah, and I mean, Hunter Hart, you, can't, Hunter Hart. you cannot, uh, obviously, he, he's only been on the podium once this year, yeah. uh, and it was a very distant podium at Florida. This is a guy coming into 2024 that I think a lot of people, including himself, had on the short list of, of championship contenders. Thus far, that hasn't panned out. Uh, that said, you know, he's still sitting up there in the points in that third place spot, and uh, you know, he's got to get to work if he wants to get up, and, and I think the fear for these guys has been the one thing that a lot of people talked about in the offseason. If Walker Fowler and Bryson Neal get hooked up and start pushing yep. each other, do they push themselves away from the rest of the, the pack? And that's what these guys need to stop. That's it. That nails it on the head right there. XC2, want to highlight that real quick. How about it for Grayson Eller? Yeah, Grayson Eller, first win of the season, taking over the points lead in the process. And, uh, yeah, just what a crazy mutter that was. Obviously, Grayson Eller grabbing the win. Uh, Dylan Walraven in second. And uh, Chris Howard, I, I believe, first ever podium in XC2 there in the third place spot. So it was wild times, but Grayson Eller coming out on top, and now he's the points leader. Great day of racing in Georgia. we got a great day of racing here in South Carolina. You've heard enough from us. We want to see what these riders are going to face today as far as terrain and courses go. Courses go. So for that, we will throw it down to Jared Bolton with the Yamaha track description. Well, thanks, guys. It's awesome to be back here at Camp Cooker Bull at GNCC. This is always a really good venue. Everybody loves coming here. And it's not just because of the racetrack. It's because everything that comes around around the... Hold on. It's not just because of the racetrack, it's what goes on around the racetrack. This is a beautiful piece of property. There's tons of ponds, the green fields are awesome. And guess what, the racetrack's pretty cool as well. When you come to South Carolina, everybody associates GNCC with Big Buck. We've been going there for over 25 years, but Camp Cooker's really come to its own. We've been here for going on eight years now. And uh, when we first started coming here, it was that mix I always talk about. You, you know, if you watch these every week, you know, say a little something for everybody. But over the last couple of years, the Moree family that owns the property here, they've acquired a couple other pieces of property, and we've really tightened up a lot of sections of this race course. Uh, once you start working your way out to the back side of the property back here, the trees get a lot closer together. It's some old stuff that was clear cut at one time, and all those pine trees have grown back really tight together. It's true single track for the ATVs and pretty tight for the bikes as well. And of course, for the bike guys, we throw in some actual enduro old school tight single track to break that up as well overall this is a beautiful facility we love coming here produces some great racing can't sit, wait to see what happens all right thank you jared for that yamaha track description we're going to let mikey waynes head over to the starting line to do some 10 second calls and get us off and rolling and we're going to get a word from all of our sponsors we'll be back with all the racing action live on racer tv You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Well, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related, so... Ah, yee! Oh, that is a vibrating pain. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You can save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And a good afternoon and a welcome to everybody watching it online at home on racertv.com. Round number four, the FMF Camp Coker Bowl at GNCC. And as you just tune in on Racer TV, we are ready for our pro rider introductions for the XC1 Pro class. Riding to the line in accordance to the points. What's up, Liam Draper? He's not racing today. That's tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. Rolling to the line first, the number one. Out of Bidwell, Ohio, the Bidwell Bullet. 
Bryson Neal on that Phoenix Racing Yamaha. Rolling to the line next. The 7 2 3 out of Rogers, Ohio on the GBC Fly Racing BNR WFR backed Yamaha Walker Fowler. Rolling to the line next, the number five. Out of Akron, Ohio, on the action off-road, GBC and BNR Motorsports back Yamaha, Josh Merritt. And rolling to the line next, the number two. Out of Newfield, New York, on the Maxis Ithaca Recreation Sports, and fly racing back Yamaha, Hunter Hart. Rolling to the line next, the 5-2-1 out of Waverly West by God, Virginia. On the over tires, Moose Racing and McGill Mafia back Honda, Adam McGill. And rolling to the line next, coming off his first podium performance just around to go, the 6 2-1 out of Hillsboro, Ohio on the action off-road GBC and Hauser back Yamaha. Wyatt Wilkin. Rolling to the line next, the number 12 out of Sunbury, Pennsylvania aboard the action off-road Amsoil and CB racing back Yamaha, Chris Boring. Roll under the line next, the 7-0-3 out of Petersburg, Indiana. Aboard the action off-road, Maxis and Fly racing back to Yamaha, Austin Abney. And roll under the line next, the number eight out of Elkridge, Maryland. On the BNR Motorsports, Kenda and Fearless back to Yamaha, Stephen Harrell. And roll into the line next, the 7 one, two, out of Waxhaw, North Carolina, on a Phoenix Racing Yamaha, John Galata Jr. And rolling to the line next, the number nine on the JMR GBC, Elka and Moose Racing back, Honda, Jared McClure. And last, but certainly not least, the 7-1-4 out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on the BNR Motorsports, Singe Graphics, and Bulletproof Doors, back Yamaha, Ronnie Rush. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your starting row for the XC1 Pro Class here at the FMF Camp Coker Bullet. GNCC and as our riders in the XC1 class get themselves settled on row number one DJ Judd exits the Monster Energy Activation Transport he jumps into the Yamaha R Max 1000 and this is where we like to say DJ Judd put on your sparkle helmet <laughs> And remove the meat as DJ Judd makes his way off of the starting line. All eyes will fixate down into turn number one where the maestro himself, Ricky Towery, will take the reins of this race. And we go as Ricky goes. Coming off a sensational muddy round down in Georgia. For those tuning in on Racer TV, we had rain overnight. We've had some off and on sprinkles throughout the morning and early afternoon. But it is a beautiful day to go racing. One minute. One minute. And we're just about ready to set it off here now. As Ricky will step out onto the track. He will look down at his watch to keep an eye on the time. And the blue flag waves, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. Shut them down. 
All of you, every one of you, there you go. All right, now I gotta ask you, South Carolina Camp Coker, are you ready to go GNCC Racing? Oh, that's pretty good, but baby, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're right here, right now. I'm gonna ask you one more time, are you ready to go GNCC Racing? Yeah. Ten seconds for row number one, the XC1 Pro. Bang, and they're off. Look at that, side by side, B. Neal out front. No, it's the number five, Josh Merritt. No, it will be the number one, Phoenix Racing Yamaha of Bryson Neal. Grabbing that whole shot and early lead. How about it? It could be a long day for the XC1 Pro Class. He's taking that Kanati Tires whole shot award. And here we go, BNR Motorsports whole shot award up for grabs in the XC2 Pro-Am. Alex Tiemann, Keaton Henderson, Jeremy Ladon, Dalton Keyes, Grayson Eller, Danik Paquin, Christopher Howard, Braxton Gross in 10 seconds. Kenny Schick, Tavin Cook, Alex Elioff, Chase Allison, Dylan Walraven, Zachary Phillips, Chance Hickey, Tucker Wyatt, Cheyenne Garcia, Tanner Walker, and Junkin James Gladham. Oh, a good drive. Oh, Robin's racing. How about that? The two, two, three of Braxton Gross gets it by maybe, maybe a tire, maybe the front grab bar. Tight racing in the XC2. BNR Motorsports grabbing the whole, or supplying the whole shot, I should say. Junior A, 19 plus in 10 seconds. Corey Vandalinder, David Machisco, Colton Kushta, Ryan Hendershot, Briggs Lazelle, Riley Salick. Connor Brandt, Trevor Furby, Jason Rood, Eric Hayes, Cody Benton, John Husky. Oh, another tight one. Boy, that one was really too close to call. That might have been Connor Brandt just edging him out. The rider out of Rogers, Ohio. But goodness gracious. A couple riders go down right there. Here we go. Ten seconds college a 16 to 18 aiden jones jace cooper parker henderson evan osborne andre williams ty mcgay caden lambruno brody lee jeremiah wolf dylan trigg talon stout nick daring harrison Lindsay, and grabbing the whole shot's going to be the 716 of logan Steele on that gbc hmf and bnr back ride Blue flag waves, and we're ready for the senior A, 40 plus, 10 seconds. The Marlboro Man, Todd Muscala, Jeffrey, P Jeffrey Pickens, they call him Papa P. Will M. Jones, Doug Morse, Mike Stevens, Sean Slattery, Nathan Yates, Chris Conklin, and Derek Hart. 303, Jeffrey Pickens, Papa P. On that GBC in Waynesburg. Fly racing back ride. Vet A, 28 plus, 10 seconds. Tyler Griffith, Henry Moore, Dason Com Com Camo, James Pat Lane, Nick Davidson, Alec Matthews, Pierre Yevis Denault, Justin Miller, Fred Marley, Tom Coons. Who wants it? 228 two, wants it. That is Nick Davidson. Out of Steubenville, Ohio on that BNR GBC and Fly Racing back ride. As we turn our attention now to the Junior B 19 plus. Ready to roll, 10 seconds. Michael Worth, Austin Harden, Tate Long, Jason Jackson Lutz, Corey Zett, Colton Whitehill, Bobby Duker, Joe Brooker, Gavin Temple, Tyler Fisher, Fisher, Shrane Cole, Adam Weckel, Denton White, Zachary Denoble, Four, ooh, four, two, oh, Denton White out of Manchester, Ohio, on that Young Cycle Works and Hauser Racing back ride, grabbing a, what was a tight hole shot right there. A couple riders getting tangled up. Blue flag waves. College B, sixteen to eighteen. Hey, a big happy birthday to Isaac Hart. Here we go. Ten seconds. Camden Mahalan, Isaac Hart, James Berger, Austin Kiger, Austin Miller, Trip Alexo, Danny Barber, Jackson Carroll, Landon Ostrich, Racer Chanel, Quentin Gauker, Noah DeCerci, and Evan Ruckel. 
Who wants the whole shot? Oh, it's gonna be the one, two, two of Cameron Maholland out of Weston, West Virginia. Getting it done early. Senior B, 40 plus. 10 seconds. Shane Worth, Ricky Lewis, Joe Dehart, Bobby McCauley, Forrest Cross, Mike Bowers, and Steve Kiggins. Good drive, right around the outside. Can he turn it into a whole shot? Yes, he can. That is the 5-1-3 of Forrest Cross on that DCI Motorsports Fast Company and GBC back ride. Vet B, 28 plus, ready to roll in 10 seconds. Clayton Kawasaki, Tanner Davisic, Simon Morin, Donald Spurgeon, Lario Fernandez, Eric Murphy, Frederick Harder, Dustin Briscoe, Christopher Streaming. Jack Stevenson, David Darnell, Leroy Groms, William Parker, Zach Bothwell, John Haggett, Higgins, 819 of John Higgins on cue. Getting it done out in front, right around the Yamaha. Getting a little tangled up there in turn number two and three. Carnage all over the place. Everybody's okay getting back on the machines and they're ready to roll. That's going to wrap us up for a moment. Bryson Neal, the Bidwell Bullet, getting it done at the Camp Coker Bullet. This is the FMF Camp Coker Bullet, round number four at GNCC. We're going to work in from our sponsors. We'll be back with more after this. You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Well, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related, so... Ah, yee! Mm. Oh, that is a vibrating pain. It's a big world out there. How do you choose to see it? When you crave the long canyons, rocky trails, rutted tracks, and lonely highways, they become a part of you. Podiums and personal records, we choose it all. Because life is about moving and feeling. It's about being connected to the adventure. Some just never pull the trigger. They keep waiting, wondering what it means to wander. It's a big world out there. You just need to ride where you belong. Whatever you drive, however you drive. Amsoil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles so you can work hard 
and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You could save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Progressive Grand National Cross Country Series. We are in the sands of Society Hill, South Carolina, for round number four, the FMF Camp Coker Bullet. My name is Jackson Burrow, and I'm alongside Zach Heron to help you bring today's action. Stay tuned, as Zach will be taking us through a start recap here soon. Yeah, thanks, Jackson. What a day of racing we've already had with us. So many rumors about Mother Nature and rain coming. And, man, we couldn't have asked for anything better. Just the perfect amount of rain, a little bit of sprinkles throughout the day, setting up for a great pro afternoon race. We take a look at the Specialized Start Recap, your XC1 Pro off and rolling, and it is the number one hugging the inside. Josh Merritt going a little wide along the outside, doing a little bit of rubbing with, I believe that's Hunter Hart going to squeeze it to the second place spot, but he has said it's the one thing on his list he needed to check off, and Bryson Neal has got himself a whole shot here in 2024, and that is bad news for the rest of the XC1 field, because the last thing you want is to give the number one some clean air early in the race. We take a look at the XC2 Pro-Am, a good jump from the inside. Thought it was maybe going to be Grayson Eller, but it is actually going to be Braxton Gross. Now look at it, banging right out of turn one, coming all the way down to the line, but hugging that inside in turn two, and Braxton Gross going to hang on for that whole shot and uh, be on the lookout for him. We know he is super strong in the sandy conditions, very similar to what we see out here today in South Carolina. But that is your XC2 class, and that is your specialized start recap here from Camp Coker taking a look there, getting a little update. So it is still the number one out front. Believe that is Hunter Hart in second. Josh Merritt hanging on to the third place spot. Is that maybe Chris Borich, Borich there in fourth? Yeah, and then I believe that might be Glotta in the fifth spot. Wyatt Wilkin. Eagle Eye in the booth with us. <laughs> the one rider that uh, definitely got buried back there on the start was the 723 of Walker Fowler. He and uh, Bryson actually made contact very early off the line, and it looked like Bryson had about a half a wheel on him. When Walker chopped the throttle, it took him from battling for the whole shot all the way back to the tail end of the XC1 field. But here you go, coming the other way, get another shot at him. Bryson Neal just looking smooth out front. But Hunter Hart looks like he's locked onto that grab bar, and Josh Merritt looks like he's ready to go as well. Chris Borch, good ride for him early. Uh, we saw Reminiscent turning back the clock two weeks ago, running up there inside the top five throughout the uh, entire race in Georgia. Yeah, going to be exciting to watch. We talk about the number two of Hunter Hart trying to lock onto the back of the number one machine, and that's exactly what you need to do right now. Bryson has been the man to beat, undefeated so far in the season, and uh, as we take a look at this Yamaha racing race format, uh, 11 and a half miles, your, your track length out here this afternoon, a two-hour long race. What do you think about this overall Camp Coker course? We talked about the rain. I don't think you could have asked for a whole lot of better conditions. No, honestly, I think the uh, rain was the perfect amount and at just the right time. Uh, anybody that pulled in here on Thursday or even yesterday morning before the rain knows it was dry, dry, dry. So that was 11 and a half miles of potentially dust and, you know, loose sand. Whereas the, what happens when you get moisture like we did uh, the last day and a half or so, it starts to pack everything together, makes for a more, uh, you know, stable racing surface. Yes, you're going to get some chop. You're definitely going to have some... Uh, some holes out there where the weather, the, where the water actually kind of gathers, uh, but by and large, the track itself is going to be in great shape, and this track is such a dynamic one. I mean, you've got a lot of tight stuff on the backside where it weaves in out of the pines, and then it comes out into these faster sections like what we're seeing in the background here on camera right now, where you can really open up these 450cc machines and, and get hard on the hammer, and we see uh, Bryson Neal uh, starting to stretch it out now a little bit. Uh, so this must be a little further into the track than where we saw them last. I actually think this might be their second time through this section. Uh, so we'll have to... Okay. Must have been some morning race footage that we were watching uh, there behind there. So that is uh, Bryson Neal leading the way. And there is now Josh Merritt up into the number two spot. And look at that. Those two have really started to gap out on the rest of the field. Big changes from what we saw just a few miles ago. Where is Hunter Hart? Uh, he has fallen back outside of this shot looking like... As they're coming now, that appears to be Austin Abney, possibly, or it could be Borich, one of the riders in that. Oh, we're, now we're back to uh, your leader, Bryson Neal, the number one machine out front on that Phoenix Racing Yamaha. Cool to see Josh Merritt again 
throw it back to round one. Merritt latches onto the back of Bryson Neal and ends up pulling a gap that no one else is able to make up, finishing there in the number two spot. If he's able to do it again today, it would uh, would really work well for him, and that's kind of what it's starting to look like here right now. But Bryson's really putting down the power and starting to open up that gap. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth as far as uh, sinking in the hooks and hanging onto the back of somebody. Josh Merritt was able to do just that, and by the time the rest of the field kind of got warmed up and started charging, it was too little too late. So we'll see whether or not the number five is able to do that once again here in South Carolina. But, man, just look at how much the quad is bouncing around. Uh, Jackson and I were talking about it. The rut's getting extremely deep around us. Still plenty of moisture, but, man, the track breaking down in a hurry. Some of those roots starting to pack out as, uh, as, as well, reaching up, almost grabbing some of the tires. Yeah, absolutely, and that is probably the biggest challenge aside from just the choppiness of, of this course is the roots. Uh, it, exactly like you're saying, Zach, it reaches up, grabs those front tires, kind of jerks the handlebars out of your hands. Man, this is one where you see blisters uh, and, and just kind of arm and hand fatigue at an all-time high on a course like this. So taking a look now on screen, believe that is Merritt. I think that's still Neil. We've actually switched. Oh, switch back. There. Okay, yep. so there's so your leader. Yep, we're at that Yamaha live racing drone shot and uh, he's following these guys through the field. Now this is back into uh, the closer side of the woods, so they were over on the other side of all the ponds. Now they've run that field section back in. They're working their way back towards completing lap number one. But uh, I tell you what, if you're a race fan at home and you want to see good racing, this is a little bit concerning. Bryce and Neil getting out front and starting to gap these guys this early, uh, that gives him a whole lot of time to try to stretch that gap out while he has open race track in front of him and the guys behind him trying to chase him down. You know, he's already outrun Hunter Hart. He's already outrun Josh Merritt. You got to think back in the pack there. Who's back there that maybe is struggling to get through that might have the pace to run with Bryce Neal? And as you see that gap get bigger and bigger, that list gets shorter and shorter. Well, and I was going to ask, we saw several of the team there, uh, whether it was his father, whether it was the Phoenix Yamaha team, giving Bryson some pit boards. What do you think he's seeing? Uh, Bryson, obviously a very strategic racer as well. We've seen when he's got the competition right behind him, sometimes he almost toys with him a little bit. I'm going to stay a couple of seconds in front and then maybe an hour into the race, I drop the hammer. Whereas today, it seems like, hey, I got fresh air right off the gate. I'll see y'all at the finish. Well, you know, if, if you ask me what he's thinking and what those pit boards might be saying, it's probably telling him what the gap is behind him. But if I were to try and kind of claw myself inside the helmet there of Bryce Neal and figure out what he might be thinking, you know, Walker Fowler has run him very close the last two races, probably closer than anyone has in, in quite some time. And you got to be thinking, now that he's out front and he's got clear racetrack, if he can open up that gap, whether it be over Hunter, Josh, Walker, you know, John Glotta, Chris Borch is back there, whoever it is, that gives him the ability to kind of read those pit boards and read the gap. He can meter his effort, not having to push all out if he's continuing to extend that gap, and likewise not waste energy if those, you know, if those guys are falling further behind. So right now, to me, this looks like an all-out sprint, almost like a uh, like a special test, if you right. would. He's just trying to run this track as hard as he can. He's not thinking about saving energy, not even really thinking about the race as a whole. He just wants to open up that gap as much as possible. And as we see here here at mile marker number ten, that gap is quite significant at this point now it's the number five of josh merritt uh in the number two spot and looking like he's really charging but right now just no one able to match that pace of bryce and neil we'll see who the next rider is coming through on screen looked like it may have been wyatt wilkin up there uh possibly austin abney or chris boards looked like they were in their mix as well and then we did see hunter hart having dropped back a few positions from second to look like he was fourth when we saw him on screen uh, just a couple of miles ago, but look at this gap. Now this is where, it oh look at this, now it's Walker Fowler up in wow. number three uh -oh. spot. So he's made up about five positions from when we saw him last, followed closely by look like Adam McGill and then Austin Abney on screen there. So those guys are on the move and Hunter Hart falling back even further. Then it's the eight of Stephen Harrell. So that's about your top six and still no Hunter Hart. So to go from the number two spot uh, back outside the top seven or eight, got to believe there's a problem with the number two machine. Uh, we'll wait and get an eye on that and see if we can figure out what's going on there. And yeah. What go a ahead, bummer Jackson. here in the sand. I've been looking forward to seeing Hunter Hart. As everybody knows, he trains in the sand. So I've been looking forward to seeing him go head-to-head -head in the sand against Bryson Neal. But it seems like he's had trouble both times we've gotten in the sand this season. Yeah, and it, it, it's not to say that necessarily he's having a, a bike machine or a bike malfunction or anything like that. I mean, it could just be, you know, you lose a couple positions, you start to tighten up, you ride tight, you make mistakes. Certainly enough time left in this one for Hunter Hart to gather it together. But again, having dropped from second to outside the top seven uh, as they run there at the 10-mile marker, 
definitely needs to get things on the right track if he wants to try to track down, especially this guy out front. You know, Bryce and Neal on rails right now and just continuing to open up this gap further and further with each camera shot. We talk about trying to manage the gap out front. Bryce and Neal dropping the hammer right off the bat, saying, I'm going to try to check out and run away with this thing early. But what do you? What would you say is that safe time? Uh, Jackson and I, we're still trying to figure it out. We say, oh, he's got 30 seconds, he's safe, and then we, we look like fools because it doesn't seem to matter how much time you have. You're never quite safe until the checker flag's flying out here. There's way too many variables to say what a safe amount of time is. I mean, obviously, when you get upwards of, say, two minutes or so, I mean, that is a massive gap, and barring you doing something really stupid, you're probably not going to give up that much time. But 30 seconds could be, you know, one small bottleneck, kind of even losing your rhythm in a section between when you get pit boards, so you don't know what the gap is. You think you're fine. You've got that 30-second gap. That can evaporate quickly with just a couple blown berms, you know, missed corners. I, I am going to say these guys are working their way coming into the finish here. When I watched the start, I saw Bryce Neal get the whole shot. I looked back through the pack and saw where everybody was. I looked at Walker Fowler, and I thought, I, I and again, this can sound biased, but these are just my honest opinions. I've raced all these guys. The guy with the best shot at, at taking a run at, at Bryce and Neal today, I felt would likely be Walker Fowler. Seeing him buried back in the pack, I said to myself, he's going to give upwards of a minute, if not more, by the time he gets up into a podium position. He's been able to do it inside of the first lap, but I think we are going to see he's going to be more than a minute outside of the, that lead that Bryce and Neal has right now in one lap of racing just by getting a bad start. It's, it's incredible. Jackson and I have been talking about it all day, the depth of the fields in all of the, the GNCC classes. because Oh, it, oh look at this. A mistake. Bryce so, and Neil blowing through the banner there. Wow, having to jump back out on, back onto the track. So uh, just like that, all of a sudden, a simple little mistake, yeah. a couple of seconds cost right there. It definitely a couple seconds cost, but I think Bryson's in the mindset and of the race mind right now that he's not going to let that unravel him. You know, it would be easy for an amateur rider or even, you know, some top pros. Little things can rattle you, and then they start to compound themselves. But right now, Bryson Neal's on top of the world. He's, you know, undefeated so far this season coming off back-to-back -back championships. I think he's strong enough that he's not going to let that set him back. You can see Josh Merritt now working his way through the finish line. Chicanes uh, working his way in there in the number two spot. And uh, we'll refresh the uh, the live timing and scoring here and see if we can get what those gaps are back from Bryce and Neal to Josh Merritt. Looks like it is. Jackson? 17 seconds is going to separate the number one and the number five at the completion of lap one. So 17 seconds, that's a pretty solid effort for Josh Merritt because it does look like Bryce and Neal is on a push pace lap. Uh, he's trying to open that up. He's not biding his time. He's not riding cautiously. We, we talked about two weeks ago in the mud. The XC1 guys are more likely to kind of take their time, cautiously approach the water and the mud, make sure they don't get it stuck. We see those XC2 riders and even those A riders jump up in the overall positions. Day like today with a guy like Bryson out front, he's giving it everything he's got trying to open up the gap early. And I think we were actually able to catch up with Bryce and talk to him a little bit about how he's feeling coming into round four and what he's thinking and headed into Camp Coker. All right, we're here with Bryce and Neil. Bryce and three for three coming into round four. Uh, let's talk about that, right? You're coming into round four, perfect season so far. When you're doing the training during the week, are you making, are you searching for anything? You're looking for any big improvements or is it just kind of sticking to the path and, and doing the same thing more or less week, week in and week out? i uh, just trying to, at this point in the season, we're, we're getting toward the middle. Uh, you know, the build-up to get to round one, it's uh, just kind of uphill the whole way. But now we're kind of getting to the point just trying to maintain, you know, and just try to hit every week, be safe on the bike, prep the bike where, uh, you know, I ain't got no ball joints, nothing breaking on me, nothing taking chances, gambles, you know, and um, you always make mistakes on your own. But try to try to avoid them at all costs and um, just, just try to hit your marks and be smooth more or less is where you get to the midseason. Just try to maintain the fitness level and that feeling on the bike. Absolutely. Now we flash back to last year here at Camp Coker. All in all, a good performance. Uh, had a little bit of a hiccup there at the end of the race. What's the feeling coming back? We've got some weather possibly in for us as well. What are your thoughts here for Camp Coker? Oh, man, we're, we're out for revenge this weekend. So for last year, so uh, we're, we love this place. We love the sand. So um, we're looking to go out here, get a good start. Hopefully we'll see what the rain does. Um, this place got a sandy mix, so it can definitely take the rain. And uh, it looks like it's very dry going to the weekend, too. So that will help with the rain in the forecast. But uh, this Yamaha is prepared, whether it's submarine water conditions or just a, a, a fast, racy sand track. So uh, we're ready to get out there and um, try to do what we didn't get to do last year and uh, try to get four wins in, in a row um, and, uh, you know, avoid what happened last year with a couple uh, uh, couple subpar, like, AZ rounds. There you go, guys. Bryson Neal ready to do battle and try to make it four for four. 
So there you go. You're hearing it from the number one himself. He, he talks about what happened last year there. Little little hiccup. The, the penalty at the end of the race, Bryson dropping down from first on the day where he finished to, to finishing third on the podium. Uh, I remember that vividly last year, seeing the emotion, a uh, little quiver in the voice on the podium. He was very upset, very disappointed. But uh, like he said, out for revenge here, and he's taking that revenge out right now. Yeah, and right now, I mean, he's leaving no doubt. I, I think there was a lot of questions. Uh, ultimately, I think he and everyone understood that the rules are the rules. Although it was it, anyone that was there that saw the line that knows what happened, it was not a malicious attempt to cheat or to cut. It was just a, a misjudgment in how far the distance of a line was, obviously. Uh, and when it comes right down to it, sometimes you just got to take your licks like a man. And what better way to do that than to come right back to the property that kind of bit you last year and, and get out front and just kind of march away and say, hey, if there was any questions about my ability to win on this property, we're going to put those to rest right now. Absolutely. Let me show you what I'm capable of now. Since then, we have had some more riders come through uh, time and scoring. Jackson, what are the gaps that we're seeing uh, moving into the top five? So 17 seconds separates Josh Merritt, Bryson Neal. Back to Adam McGill, your third place rider is 33 seconds and then only 1.5 seconds between McGill and Fowler. Back to Abney is another 10 seconds. So 33 seconds there between Merritt and McGill with only one second between Fowler and McGill. And one rider noticeably missing from the top 20 overall. Unless I'm missing him, Jackson, you can see there, I do not see the name Hunter Hart there anywhere inside the top 20. So our speculation of potentially a problem, my speculation, I apologize, I'm not trying to suck you guys into this. Uh, you know, I saw him dropping backwards at a very rapid rate. And then to see him not come through it all again at the 10 mile marker, uh, it, it looks like he has not even checked in. Again, folks at home, we have to put the little asterisk. We do not see them cross the finish line. We're going off live timing and scoring. There's transponder scoring, so it is possible that he's checked in. But based on what we're showing, he has not yet checked in to complete one lap. And now we're at the two mile marker, and it's Bryson Neal still continuing to march away. 17 seconds, Jackson, was the gap when we last saw them. Josh Merritt. You know, uh, Adam McGill, Walker Fowler, these guys need to do something to minimize that gap if they want to have a chance to race him today or he's just going to march away. Exactly, Johnny. The Bidwell bullet has fired off here, and it's only been one lap into it. We're here at mile two of the lap number two. And Josh Merritt still looking good. Like, he's charging, definitely uh, doing everything he can and putting down a really good pace right now. It doesn't look like that gap has opened up a whole lot more. I I'd say, if anything, a few seconds one way or another. We, we didn't get a clock on that. But uh, 17 seconds, it was two, two miles ago, and I think we're kind of still in that range. Now, next comes the 521 of Adam McGill there in the number three spot, and then it's the 723 of Walker Fowler uh, sitting in the number four spot. So those are your top four as they've come through here now at the two mile mark. And to speak on Walker Fowler a little bit, he was not happy with the second place. Not that he was disgusted with the second place, but he said he's tired of being the runner up. When I got to talk to him after his finish at the last race, he's ready to get up there to that number one spot. We all know he is more than capable of it. He knows exactly how to do it. So we're just waiting on the time. Yeah, and that's exactly, you know, one. Of, and there's Stephen Harrell now into the number five spot. He's gotten his way around Austin Abney, who's in sixth, and then the seventh was the 712 of John Glotta. So that's your top seven. That was your number three and four riders as they come through. There's Wyatt Wilkin now looking like he's running in about the eighth place position with that camera panning back and forth. Little can't say for sure we didn't miss anybody, but uh, we do know that your top four uh, are now checked in here on the left side of the screen at the Monster Mile. And it is Bryson Neal leading the way, Josh Merritt second, Adam McGill third, and Walker Fowler fourth. Here they come now, fifth place, the number eight at uh, BNR Motorsports Kenda back machine of Stephen Harrell and then Austin Abney out of Indiana put the pressure on one of the better early rides we've seen from him and then a John Glotta Jr. there in seventh and there is Wyatt Wilkin in the number eight spot. Well, here we go. The stage is set. The Bidwell Bullet trying to put it to bed early, starting off with a hole shot. We're going to grab a word from our sponsors and be back here in just a few minutes for more of the FMF Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. tires delivering exceptional performance on all types of vehicles automotive atvs utvs motorcycles bicycles trailers lawn and garden and even golf trust kenda tires to guide you on your next adventure kenda designed for 
for your journey. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Comedic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Comedic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best inside their engine. Comedic Gaskets are always constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environments. Whether it's a championship on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts alike depend on Comedic. Comedic Gaskets, sealing championships since 1989. I'm seven-time GNCC champion Walker Fowler, and I run GBC. Second. Like a bullet into the first turn, the number one with the pink helmet and pink bars. It is Walker Fowler, the seventh. You should be proud of yourself, Devin Feehan. What a ride today. I'm Devin Feehan, and I run GBC. I'm Josh Merritt, and I run GBC. I'm Chris Borch, and I run, and I run, I run GBC. And welcome back to the Camp Coker Bullet. We are here at mile six, waiting for our leaders to come through. We'll take a look at our top 10 overall for the season. Bryson Neal, he is your points leader, going three for three this year with 90 points. Walker Fowler just behind him with 71. Josh Merritt sitting in the third place position as far as points are concerned. Hunter Hart and Adam McGill round out our top five in points. And Johnny taking a look already over 30 points separating the top three. Yeah, there you go. I mean, that's a, that's a big gap. You know, when you start looking at a 33-point gap, point gap back to third place position, I mean, Bryce and Neal, we only pay 30 points per round, so when you come out, you win three in a row and you get 90. It just puts you in a position where everybody else has to be perfect to try to stay even close, uh, and you're gaining five points per race on the second-place finisher. And so far, you know, the most consistent rider aside from Bryson has been Walker Fowler, who has been on the podium every round with the 3-2-2. You know, Josh Merritt, obviously starting off the season on fire with that second place position. Uh, not yet able to back it up with another podium, but looking good so far today, sitting in that number two spot. So could be a big points day for him. But uh, right now, Bryce Neal looking to extend that points lead even further. We could be talking about 120 points at the end of today, which would just be a big, big, uh, you know, points tally for anybody else to try to match as we add up here. Yeah, no doubt about it. So Bryce and Neil leading the way last time we saw Josh Merritt in second. Adam McGill holding on to third, but he has some company from Walker Fowler. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what mile marker we're at, but this is where, so to your left, there's a lot of tight pines there. And once they venture over, oh, there we go. See, mile marker number six. Uh, they venture in there, and it's a pretty one-lined section of racetrack. Right now, we can see no lapped riders working their way through, but here is Bryce Neal on screen. As the race develops later, guys, we're going to keep an eye on that section to the left I was just talking about because that would be an easy place to gain or lose time once they start getting into lapped riders. Very, very difficult to pass in there. B. Neal looking good early in this one. Saw him grab the whole shot. Uh, big uh, question mark right now. Zach Heron is out and about in the pro pits trying to figure out what the heck is going on or what happened with uh, with Hunter Hart. So we'll try to get you guys updated on that as soon as possible. Yeah, it looked like it was about 33 minutes and 29 seconds uh, when they came, and came out of this camera shot. So Josh still has to make a couple corners here in the number two spot. Josh Merritt there, uh, really just what a year for him so far. Yeah. I did hear uh, a little bit under the weather the last couple days. So we'll it would be interesting to see how much that may or may not affect him as this race goes on. He said he thought it was some bad wings from a roadside restaurant. 
uh, that he got on the way up here on Thursday. But look at that, looking back still, nobody else out into the fields. There is Adam McGill on the 521, closely pursued by the 723 of Walker Fowler. Uh, didn't see exactly what that gap was because I started fixating on uh, these guys coming, but I, I think it has grown from the 17 seconds. But I do think that this gap may actually be a little closer. Looks like McGill and Fowler may be starting to make just a little bit of time up on the number five of Josh Merrick. Here we see this is the battle for third on screen. Adam McGill has it, and Walker Fowler wants it. Adam McGill on screen tucking back into the trees there. A real resurgence for him the last couple years. You know, he's, you can visibly see looking at him, he's having a lot of fun. Uh, he really looks like he's in good shape, and, it, and it's translating some good finishes. Obviously, getting a win yeah. last year, and uh, you know, looking maybe to put himself in a position to hold on to this one for a podium today. Yeah, he, he's been doing really well. It's kind of interesting how, uh, like, the outlook for him changed after finding out, hey, I've got Lyme disease now. I've got to change up the diet, the exercise routine. It kind of, uh, what, knocked five years off of uh, his racing career, essentially. He's back up there in the fight pretty consistently now. And, uh, well, hey, you know what? Speaking of Adam McGill, I believe we had a chance to catch up with him, get a little more uh, insight from him from the horse's mouth, from the gator's mouth, if you will. Everybody knows Adam McGill is a fan favorite, but McGill also a sponsor favorite, always looking for new ways to help incorporate the fans with the sponsors, can make the connection. Adam, man, uh, you're a man of the people, as we like to say. Always got something interesting going on. What do you got here at Camp Coker? For sure. So I've been working with Parts Unlimited and Moose Racing now for quite some time, and we decided to now do the very first sport machine under the tent, as well as I'm trying to get into the magazine. So they've never had a sport machine at the show. I went to MVP in Louisville. Um, it was a huge hit. I got to talking with them, and they would like to do it at the, the truck at these events. So we did a bike just for Parts and Moose and put their products on it, and, man, it turned out super sharp. It's really killer. People are digging it, and it's a little old school. You know, the chrome, the stuff like that, and it's the stuff that I like, and as well as it's like, oh, man, it's blingy. It's shiny, right, because everybody loves a little bit of chrome. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about this 2024 season. Uh, obviously, probably wishing to be uh, on the box some, battling it out for wins, but not a bad season by any stretch. What are your thoughts overall? We're kind of in the swing of things now here at round four. What's the thoughts on 24? Oh, for me, it's it's been uh, it's been definitely good. It's been one of the best starts I've had in a long time. Um, but like I've told you and I've told everybody, I want to have a season where I have no mechanical failures. I've, I don't know, even with the factory days, I've ever had a season where I've had zero failures. So for me, it's like that's my hurdle I'm trying to get over. Um, we had a good race in Florida. Uh, we was I, I wanted another lap. Um, I'm glad they kind of cut it short, but I still needed another lap, if you know what I mean. Uh, South Carolina was really good. We went up fourth there. We was close to the box. And Georgia, I mean, we was we was there. We was there all day. And um, I have a – so I've been nursing a, a small issue, which isn't a big deal. Um, but I ended up tagging a stump there. When I tagged the stump, it took me off my game, and I just sunk that thing. Man, it looked like chocolate peanut butter out there. And it was just – it was everything I could do to get it out. And I fell back to ninth at that point. I was just in, in conserve and get the bike to the finish. And it just – it took all the wind out of the sails because, I mean, in conditions like you've seen, it was hard to pull away because every corner was something new at you, right? Whether it be the traffic, whether it be the ruts, whether it be a line, whether it be whatever. And it was just, it was one of the probably top five worst mud races I've ever done. And I've been doing this almost 20 years. Ooh, shouting out to Georgia there. Tough one, mudder, different kind of mudder too. It was like, you know, we had one was well, a bike side, I guess last year there, but yeah, that, that was a gnarly race. Uh, and he has been doing it for a while, 20 years. Well, I won't I, say that too much, Johnny. You, you did it a lot longer than that. Yeah, but he's still doing it. Yeah, and I, I gave it up and moved in here with you guys. That's much right. warmer, drier, and uh, quite frankly, the view's better. <laughs> it's fair. You know, but it, it is funny, you know, Adam saying he struggled a little bit in those conditions, and it was tough because back in 2008, he pulled off one of, if not, there's some debate, possibly the biggest margin of victory ever in a GNCC, winning that round in an absolute complete mutter by eight minutes. Holy smokes. Wow. And, and there was a, a lot of uh, statements after the fact, but it was completely legal. He made all his time, uh, or not all of his time, he was riding very sure. well, he was winning anyway, uh, but he rode these two telephone poles across a ravine, like almost like a skateboard grind, 
like got up speed and, and ground across these telephone poles to make it across the section no one else made it and no one else knew he did it so after the fact we were all like how Holy did he get cow. through there and we went back and looked and they said he hit those telephone poles and slid across this ravine and we're like yeah man he can have it <laughs> take it <laughs> yeah, congratulations so kudos to him but i think it was like eight minutes and seven seconds Whoa. or something like that we'd have to go back and look it was georgia in 2008 but enough reminiscing on screen the number one <laughs> the bidwell bullet and doing bullet things man yeah. just fast as a speeding bullet right now yeah, certainly on the move. Should check in for a second lap completed here in just about three minutes. So we'll see what that gap looks like. As you guys were talking earlier, it looks like he's certainly extended that. It was uh, 17 and a half seconds or just at over 17 seconds when they checked in with lap one completed. But yeah, being Neil on the move. Um, I spoke with uh, Monster Energy pre-race support. We spoke with uh, Walker Fowler and kind of dove in on those post-race interview of Man, you seem like that resurgence of that championship caliber mindset of I've got to get wins. And he said, yeah. And then at the same time, he's he kind of dove in a little deeper on watching Bryson Neal while he wasn't racing last year, Walker Fowler, and sort of studying him. And he said he has found a way to channel that speed and two and three in a battle. Nope, we've seen a flip flop. Oh, flip flop. Uh, Walker Fowler now up to the number three spot has worked his way around the 521 of Adam McGill uh, and looks like he's made, they both have made up a little bit of ground on Josh Merritt. Mm -hmm. Was 33 seconds when they checked in at scoring. It's a little less than that now. So starting to chip away at it, getting ever so closer. Look at this, opposite lines. This may actually turn into oh. a pass back. Look at that, side by side. These guys uh, really, you know, that shows you the different lines and how they come together. But I'll tell you right now, Probably not two guys on the track that have more respect for each <laughs> no other doubt. than these two. Uh, you know, this goes way back to the days, you know, when Walker was uh, an A-class rider or even a youth rider. They would ride together occasionally, and, uh, you know, they've, they've been friends and, and ridden together a very, very long time. So a lot of respect between these two. Oh, no doubt. And uh, it's funny, Adam talked about that a little bit a couple of rounds ago, how much uh, the resurgence in his career, and he's had some good battles this year on Racer TV with Walker Fowler as well as uh, Chris Borich. Yep. And he's like, man, it makes me feel 10 years younger again. This is this is wild that they're still doing it. I got to tell you, man, uh, you know, we talked about it at length two weeks ago, but seeing Chris Borich and Adam Gill battling up very near podium positions at the last round, uh, man, it was like, felt like turning back the clock. Yeah. It was, it was definitely You were ready to gear cool. up, weren't you? Come on. No, no, come on. And I'm past that point. I, I had right. my time. Uh, I loved every second of it, but man, I just enjoy being in here with you guys now and calling the action and watching Bryson Neal do his thing, man. It's like poetry in motion. But uh, I will say, uh, this week, Walker actually posted a um, uh, throwback, I guess, or whatever it is. It was a timeline review from Facebook uh, from 2013, a year ago this week. Uh, Walker and I were on the podium with Chris Borich at, at uh, the Georgia GNCC, and that kind of brought back the memories. Nice. And, and you have those fleeting moments of, mm -hmm. hey, man. And then I'm like, no. no I no, remember no. how hard I had to work to do that and how much it hurt, and it's way more <laughs> cool. You know, those of you folks at home watching this on Racer TV, you know, number one, it's super enjoyable. Sure. And, and number two, it, it, it's really easy. You, you know, you, you, you don't <laughs> right. get blisters. You know, you don't have sand in your teeth. You don't have to wash the machine afterwards. You know, Josh Merritt, uh, Bryson Neal, Walker Fowler, Adam McGill, these guys are running, you know, upper 170, mm -hmm. 180 heart rates right now. They're giving everything they have physically and mentally to put this show on for you. And you get to grab a bag of chips, yes. pop, pop <laughs> yes. your favorite cold beverage, and just watch along. What a great setup. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. Oh, by the way, it's free. It's right. free, so we should change it to Racer TV free instead of Racer TV live. <laughs> Look it. at this, already starting to open up just a little bit of a gap is Walker Fowler up into that number three spot. But Adam McGill latched on and looking good again, turning back the clock, giving everything that machine has, and uh, you know trying to track down Josh Merritt. And eventually, you know these guys aren't going to want to stop if they're able to catch Josh Merritt. They're all three going to want to hook up, work together, try to go after that big number one of Bryson Neal. And uh, this is Hunter Hart with the machine stood up on end. Hard to see exactly what they're working on, but does not look like it has a lot of potential to be good. He's, he's not making any moves like he's going to get back out there. So it looked like they had the machine flipped up on end, checking it out. I uh, saw Matt Pierce from Pierce Performance over there taking a look, and uh, we'll see if maybe Jackson Burrell can get us an update. Uh, if Hunter's in a talking mood or somebody from his crew, see exactly what happened because he started off strong. Yeah. They're in the number two spot, had Bryson right in his sights, and then we saw him kind of fading back ultimately dropping out of the race. Bummer for Hunter Hart. 
Meanwhile, uh, B. Neal trying to close in on a uh, second lap completed. I should have remembered that second lap going to be here. The rest of the laps will be a little faster or longer, I should say, than that first lap. Yeah, you talked about the, the battle between Walker and McGill starting to creep into the back of Merritt. Merritt's kind of in no man's land right now. He doesn't have that visual cue to base off of Rice and Neal. And it's, it's hard to keep that pace up, whereas Walker, I think in a couple of these spots, she's able to just catch the catch a glimpse of uh, of Merritt just in front of him. And then obviously McGill got Walker right there, kind of the, uh, what is it, the bone in front of the dog, right? Yeah. He's trying to get him to chase after. So uh, all in all, I think Merritt doing a great job kind of being out by himself, still running that top pace, not letting Neil just run away from it entirely and not letting Walker Fowler and McGill just creep up on him. Well, to me, what's a little bit different about this than round one, round two, Josh was really able to get his hooks into Bryce and Neil and, and kind of hung with him. For, it was over a lap. You know, for a full lap, he was within sight, and then about a, another half a lap that it was kind of like that 10, 12-second gap where Bryson was out there, but Josh was still kind of keying off his pace. This time you know josh started off in third we don't know how long it took him to get around hunter or what transpired with hunter there bryson neal in the pits in the gbc power sports tires pit stop area you can see dad chris there with the fuel some fresh goggles one man keep it simple keep it easy in and out not sure if we're going to get a lock in no we get a uh we get a roll off in. He's, he's adjusting <laughs> the goggles, making sure that they're uh, ready to go. Look at how he's just absorbing the bumps and moving, almost like a supercross scrub. Uh, now we'll wait and we'll watch and we'll see what the gaps are when they check in with this lap complete. But to finish that thought up, I think Josh did not benefit as much this race. He did not latch on to Bryson long enough to really draw him away. He's been having to set his own pace. And now he's kind of looking like we won't know until we get exact gaps, looking like those two behind him are starting to catch him. If I'm Josh Merritt, I'm going to keep riding my race, but I'm going to try to do a reset when Walker Fowler, if, if, but most likely when, Walker and Adam McGill catch you, do that reset. If you're comfortable leading, key off of them. If you're not, let one of them by, you know, get your hooks into them behind them and let them set the pace because it's difficult to set your own pace, especially a rider like Josh, who's newer to being at the front. It just takes time to, to garner that race craft and that ability to rate trail like that. But he's doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, yeah, doing stellar. And he's in and out of the pits. Merritt is in that two spot and no signs of third right now. Oh, and there, there we go. go. So Walker's actually going to make it a three-lap run okay. uh, without a stop. And so is Adam. So McGill. is Adam. So now we're really going to see that gap to Merritt uh, come down. It looked like uh, mechanic Mark Notman doing the math, sending him out. And now there, you can see, going to be less than 10 seconds behind Josh Merritt there. And Adam McGill right back to the rear wheels of Fowler. So this one really starting to tighten up with your second, third, and fourth place riders on screen. Now checking in. Two laps complete. Love it. We got pit strategy at play uh, in what was a short, shortened first lap. Or shorter, I should say. So it kind of falls in that. What, what are your thoughts, Johnny? What would you have done here? Your guy, Mark Notman, probably saying, hey, try to go send it three. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, with it being at uh, 46 minutes, you know, it, it definitely, we're, we're not yet to the halfway point um, with that last lap. Now with two laps complete, we went from a 21 minute lap time to 24. Uh, so it's looking like probably going to be, it's definitely not going to be a four lap race. Sure. Uh, it's for sure going to be at least five. Uh, so with a five lap race, you know, I think it's, it's kind of a coin flip. Obviously, Mark and the crew there over at the uh, WFR team deciding that they felt there was a benefit to let him go. I, I think one of the big things is, you know, now he can see Josh right there in front of him. Um, and I think kind of what they're weighing on is he wants to do some damage early, maybe try to get around Josh and try to close that gap to Bryson Neal while he has the opportunity because next lap he's got fuel. Um, yeah. I, I don't see a huge benefit or loss. If, if you don't gain or lose positions in the pits, it really just comes down to what your rider prefers. And maybe that's a discussion they had early where Walker said, hey, I'd rather pit late than early. Yeah. I need I need to uh, kind of get myself going. Makes sense. And sounds like uh, Jackson Burrell is standing by in the pro pits, I believe, with Hunter Hart. Yeah, guys, I'm down here with Hunter Hart. Going to see exactly what is wrong with this machine. Talking to Mark Notman now. Hunter. Hunter, could you tell us what's going on? Yeah, dude, we're um, not really sure. I uh, was, you know, right on Bryson off the start, and uh, we were gone, going good, and uh, we were just up in the pines and just ended up, I, I didn't even hit anything, just kind of the front end just snapped and uh, something uh, something in the front end ended up uh, failing and uh, we can't turn left can't turn right can't go straight um, 
Yeah, you know, uh, bummer, bummer of a day. You know, we uh, we uh, we're we're in a good position to uh, to do some do some good racing today, and um, you know, uh, bummed bummed that we got a whole 13 minutes in today. You know, um, yeah, not uh, not not sure. You know. All right. Well, thanks for the words, Hunter. We'll see you at the next one. All right, there you go. So a lot of questions still. Yes. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot of answers. I'm sure they're going to have to get that machine back, uh, you know, get it torn down, see exactly what the issue is there, uh, saying that he can't turn left, can't turn right, can't go straight. Uh, that's a catastrophic failure of yeah, some right. kind. It makes it difficult, uh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you know, at the speeds these guys are going, uh, the slightest little thing in the machine really becomes evident, uh, and, it, and it takes a lot to... to you know, push yourself through that. Don't know exactly what Hunter had going on, obviously, uh, but I'm sure they'll, again, get that machine back to the shop, get it torn down, figure out what it is, and get it sorted uh, moving forward into round number five here coming up in just a couple of weeks. Looks like the battle we're watching on screen from our Yamaha Racing Live drone is that of the number five of, oh, actually, that is the 723 of Walker Fowler and the 521 of Adam McGill. Looks like Josh Merritt still a little bit ahead of these two uh, when they checked in. With two laps complete, it was six seconds back. Uh, was Walker Fowler from Josh Merritt, but 58 and a half seconds back was Josh Merritt from Bryson Neal. So you can see Bryson Neal right now with a lap time of 24 minutes and 24 seconds on lap number two, just continuing to open up what was a 17 second gap over Josh Merritt all the way to 58 and a half seconds. So putting another 41 seconds on Josh on lap number two and also continuing to stretch it out over the rest of the field as well. Yes. And he really doesn't even look like he's he's charging that hard anymore at this point. He kind of settled into settled into a pace. And he, he just seems to be at one with the machine. We talk about it all the time. Riders kind of looking like they're fighting the machines as they come through. It's, it's kicking them around. It's, it's jerking different directions. Whereas with Bryson, even when he's going through the rough stuff, even when he's going through the unpredictable stuff, in some way it does seem like he can predict exactly where that Phoenix Yamaha is going to go. And, and, and he's very comfortable on his setup. That's something he keeps talking about on the podium is just how good he feels on the machine. Uh, and it's funny, we talked about him compared to a little bit different stature as his teammate, John Blotta Jr., compared to the height. And it just shows these guys it's a little different for each one of them, but they've really got something worked out for that number one right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and confidence obviously breeds results, and results breeds confidence. And right now, everything is going the way of Bryson Neal. Like you said, looks very comfortable on that Phoenix Racing Yamaha machine. Uh, looking like he's got all, firing on all cylinders, the bike working well, chassis working well, suspension working well, motor package, everything just at full steam. And he looks like he's, again, as, as you said, doesn't look like he's going as fast as the other riders, but yet when you look at the stopwatch, he's continuing to pull out the gap. And that, again, just comes down to a comfort, comes down to a confidence thing. And uh, these guys are absolutely rolling right now, and he's continuing to pull out just a few seconds at a time, just about every camera shot that we see. Yeah, without a doubt, continuing to chip away and grow that lead. Definitely able for uh, Walker's able to see Merritt now at this point. We said it before, he's maybe just able to catch a glimpse, but now I know at this point he's able to see the, the number five at certain points. And so uh, that's definitely not somebody you want to give any kind of visual motivation with or any way to start tracking you is Walker Fowler. So be curious to see whether or not we see this gap close up a little quicker now that Walker is able to consistently catch a glimpse of Josh Merritt. Yeah, it will be interesting to see, but it, right now Josh Merritt is managing it pretty well. We've gone two miles since the finish line, and what was a six-second gap is still mm -hmm. about a six- or seven-second gap. So Walker hasn't quite gotten close enough to put pressure on Josh or if he has, Josh has responded right now, riding very well. And now it's really these three that are starting to distance them. Well, uh, obviously, Bryce and Elop, sure. then the group of the next three really starting to distance themselves from the rest of the field. Looking back through up to the number five spot now is John Glauda Jr. So he's moved up a couple spot and spots and brought with him Wyatt Wilkin now up to six. And this looks like these would be these two on screen. And it is the 721 and the 621 uh, or 712 and the 621 on screen. And then uh, just behind them, it is the... XC1 rookie, Stephen Harrell, our 2023 XC2 Pro-Am champion, moved up to the big boy class and uh, making a heck of a run. Yeah, sitting there in that seventh spot, Abney back in eighth, ninth, Ronnie Rush and Boric rounding out that top ten. Then you get outside of that, get into the XC2 guys. Uh, let's see, Tavin Cook leading that one. Grayson Eller, your points leader and coming off, uh, I believe, the win in Georgia, uh, sitting in the number 11 spot, with, uh, Braxton, or 12 spot with Braxton Gross rounding out that top three in the XC2. 
A lot of battling going on. A lot of good racing action still left ahead of us. And uh, we've had a lot of good racing action already so far today. And uh, when we look back and see what's already happened here today, this actually was the pass Walker Fowler made on Adam McGill. Almost looked like McGill may have given him that one there. Uh, he was able to get the drive, looking like Walker maybe had a little more pace. Adam letting him by. Moving forward, then Adam latching onto the back of Adam. This is nine miles into lap number two. They are trying to chase down the riders in front of them. Uh, leading the way, still Bryson Neal, second. Look at this, almost coming back. You see them oh. back together. You know, it, it, these are the multi-line through the pines and things getting wild, boys. And unfortunately, the number two, a Hunter Hart, not having the luck he was hoping for at round number four. There you see, if the quad's vertical, something definitely not going right, not going to be able to finish this one. But right now, all is looking well for the number one of Bryson Neal there. Not a clock in, not a lock in, but uh, what do we call that one? A roll off in? A roll, -off. roll off. There we go. And uh, Josh Merritt once again having a solid ride. Walker Fowler not yet pitted, so uh, both him and McGill looking at a three lap pit strategy. We'll see how that one plays out here in just a few. We're going to get a word from our sponsors and we'll be back. This is the Progressive GNCC Racing Series. It takes commitment. success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. ontrackschool.com, check it out. 30 minutes and two laps. let's go racing. We've been there since the very beginning. 20 laps, the main event, the mud, the blood, the bear. Organizing the industry and building champions. hundred years of defending your rights to ride into the future. Community, family, teamwork. It's what we have stood on for over a decade. Hauling might be what we do at the surface, but it's much deeper than that. Because what you need matters. When you need a haul, give us a call at 724-852-4488. For 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, we at JD Enterprises are prepared to serve you. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. Taking a look at our past winners, and I think that would probably exp explain a little bit of Hunter Hart's uh, kind of somberness, if you will, knowing he uh, picked up the win here last year. Bryson Neal, the previous two years, Walker Fowler, Chris Borich, 2019, and then Walker Fowler, Walker Fowler, Walker Fowler, way back in the day in 17 and 18. I forget that we've not been coming here that long. It, it, 17, was that the first year? I guess it no, was. No, we did race here in 2016. That's what I thought, okay. Uh, I don't know how, I think 16 was the first year, but I, we definitely did race here in yeah. 2016. B. Neal, Bidwell Bullet. How appropriate, trying to take a win at the Camp Coker Bullet. Trophy seems fitting. The Bidwell Bullet wins the Camp Coker Bullet. That's it. Bullets on bullets. Give me back my bullet. Okay, that's it. There we go. <laughs> Mikey, I know you're a whiskey man. Isn't bullet a whiskey? It is. Oh. Bullet is spelled differently, but yes. 
We got to find things to talk about because <laughs> all we have <laughs> is Neal's dead air after Bryson Neal comes is, through. Uh, Folks, we're not throwing the towel in five. yet. We're yeah. not quite halfway through this one yet. We're, we're coming up on the halfway mark, and Bryson Neal has opened up a gap, but a pretty significant gap. Sure. But there's a heck of a battle going on behind him for those final two podium positions, <laughs> and you just can't give these things away un until the checkered right. flag flies. But as I keep talking and I see that the gap continues to grow, it becomes more certain that right now, at least at this point in the race, nobody having the pace yeah. to match Bryson Neal. You know, it's interesting about that, and I've, we've said it on the show before, you know, when Walker Fowler was winning race after race, Josh, there is that battle. Yep, Josh Merritt, Walker Fowler now has gotten to the rear wheels of Josh Merritt, and there is Adam McGill lurking in the background. So this is second, third, and just behind them, fourth, as they run on the racetrack. McGill kind of hanging back there. He says, sorry, let's see how you play this out with Merritt. Walker applying the pressure. Trying to force the issue for sure. Yeah. You can see Walker trying around the outside of that berm, trying anything to try to get a run on the number five of Josh Merritt, but right now just not able to make the pass and make it stick. Let's see if he can square him up here. Looks like Josh going to take the preferred line and Walker following. There he oh, goes. Looks like, see, that was a... He gave that position up right there. He obviously is throwing everything he has at it, trying to, you know, trying to hold off Walker, but also track down Bryce. And the gap keeps growing. In my opinion, a smart move right there. Yeah. You know, Walker obviously showing, hey, I want that spot. I think I can go after Bryson. You know, Josh, if, if he's able to latch on, they may be able to uh, set an even little bit faster pace. Uh, what Josh is in, in danger of now is he's also going to have pressure from behind yeah. on the 521 of Adam McGill. And, yeah, it's a good point. Walker Fowler will have to pit this time around as well. So that's coming up here in, uh, what, about 10, 10 minutes. And uh, it sounds like we just got confirmation on it being a five-lap race. Uh, so, yeah, we're two into it. And you'll have Walker Fowler need to pit. So, yeah, he does need to wick it up, pick up some time here as well. Yeah, and Bryson Neal and Josh Merritt have already pitted. Right. Uh, so if Josh is able to stay close enough to Walker and or uh, stay close enough to Adam or stay ahead of Adam, that gap will even grow further because Josh has already pitted. The two riders sandwiching him both in front and behind have not pitted. Uh, so when we see those guys come in, we know we pretty much for certain will see both the 723 of Fowler and the 521 of McGill coming in, likely getting some fuel, maybe some fresh goggles, maybe a drink of water, and a little pat on the back saying, hey guys, uh, the Bidwell <laughs> Bullet is out front. Uh, we're going to need to kick it into high gear if we're going to track him down. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. That was, that was what I was going to say with Bryce and Neal and picking up all these wins. Yeah, sometimes it's boring when he's out front by that much. We had the same thing with Walker Fowler. We had it with uh, with Caleb Russell on the bike side for years. Uh, it is very reminiscent, and I can't help but think, which is Supercross in Indy last weekend, and um, Jet Lawrence takes first in the Triple Crown, and then he takes first, and then he takes first. And the crowd was excited, but they were kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. But at the same time, 10, 15 years from now, we're all going to talk about, I was there watching Bryson Neal do this. I watched Walker do it. I watched Caleb, all those things. So it's one of those things where, yeah, sometimes it makes for some boring racing when a guy's out front by a minute plus. But at the same time, you are watching absolute generational talent, and that's pretty daggone cool. Well, and another thing I think is cool is is how much it means to these guys. It, it's, it's easy for us to get caught up in, in this, and especially yeah. for myself being relatively new to the GNCC world, you know, I didn't grow up watching Walker Fowler dominate. You know, I didn't go through years of that, but you know who did? Bryson Neal. And yeah. that's what he said on the podium as many times. He said, trust me, there have been more nights than you guys can count that I have sat up and thought about how I'm going to beat Walker Fowler, what I need to do, how much harder I need to train. And now that day has come. And so, yeah, it gets a little boring for us, but for somebody like Bryson Neal, he's earned it each and every weekend. He's put the time in and uh, now he's reaping the rewards. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's been a student in the game. He raced here all the way back in the dad his, er, day. His dad, Chris Neal, uh, a top rider in our four-stroke stock class in the morning, uh, and, you know, out there battling, putting himself on the podium. And Bryson, just a little guy out there on a 90cc machine, uh, you know, at that point, you can't imagine that there was any thoughts of, hey, someday, you know, you could say I want to be a champion, but uh, the work that he's put in, the commitment that they as a family and the group around him have put in, and, you know, the same goes. Walker Fowler, a former youth champion as well. Uh, Adam McGill is not a youth champion, but been in the series a very long time. Uh, kind of bursting onto the scene back in the mid 2000s uh, now approaching 20 years ago when he first showed up uh, and, and started racing GNCC so all these guys up front you know they're they're Josh Merritt another one a former youth uh, class champion and multi-time youth race winner uh, it's you know these guys have been at it so long but like you said when you get it figured out it, it just kind of 
everything clicks. And that's where Bryson Neal's at right now. And it leaves everybody else kind of scratching their heads. And now the, the, uh, the situation is flipped. Now it's Walker Fowler staying up at night, you know, thinking, how am I going to beat this guy? It's Josh Merritt staying up at night saying, how am I going to get to that next level? I've gotten to where it's a mindset, too. We talked about it at round one with Josh Merritt. You know, last year, all those top fives talking about, hey, he's a top five guy that could get a podium. Then we fast forward to 2024, and it's like, now, is he a podium guy? You know, in week in and week out, I believe he could be. What's he got to do to go to the next level to battle this guy right here? He's going to have to stay awake a lot of nights and put a lot of work to make it happen. Yeah, it is definitely uh, one of those things where the sword has only gotten sharper over time, and now uh, it's, it's finite little things, you know. I, I mean, you look at the difference between Bryson and Walker. Both are incredible riders, incredible intensity, and it's it's almost impossible for the naked eye to be able to pick out the differences. What is what is Bryson doing that's making him go this much faster? And uh, that's what we talk about it a lot of times when we see the riders throughout the morning checking out the track, right? Somebody like myself, you know, I might be looking at the track, oh, yeah, there's, there's, well, there's one line right here. How about that? And then you go and talk to somebody like a Bryson Neal, somebody like a Wyatt Wilkin I talked to earlier today, and he's like, well, I'm seeing something might be able to pop up over there over time, and in the AM race, they'll probably make a line right there. They, these guys are literally trying yeah. to tell the future, and they're almost, uh, you know, psychic reading the dirt in front of them, <laughs> if you will, just to try to figure out in a couple hours what is this going to look like. So there's a lot going on for, for setting up the bike, it, predicting what the track's going to do, and uh, that's what ultimately makes them the best of the best. And talk about predicting. We predict that Josh Merritt might be able to key off a of Walker Fowler, looking like he's doing just that. Uh, they did have some lap traffic traffic in front of them in that last section there. But uh, what that is translated to is uh, Walker putting the hammer down, but Josh Merritt able to you know, really match him every step of the way, staying right there on his heels and uh, drawing himself a little bit further away from Adam McGill behind them there in the number four spot. So this is the battle over second place you're watching on screen. The 723 of Walker Fowler having it. Josh Merritt having kind of just given up that position a couple miles ago, now looking like he's starting to put some pressure and maybe wanting that position back. See all of our camera crews there uh, ripping along with the cameras, getting these shots that you'll be able to see not only live with us now, but uh, on the future, in the future on Racer TV when you watch the, uh, the full produced shows. There you can see another camera bike uh, kind of following along. A lot, lot of good shots there. Gonna have the Insta bangers flow in here shortly, that's for sure. Always got the, got the social media looking good for our top riders. Man, just picking their way through. In that one section through the trees, didn't look like there was a whole lot of options. No. Kind of pick the, the yeah. left or the right and hang on. Yeah, that's a pretty iconic section here, though. It's two lines split by a line of pine trees down the middle. And uh, Zach, backing up to, to your kind of question statement of what it what it is that Bryce O'Neill is, is doing uh, that, that's different, uh, that, you know, if you're Walker Fowler, if you're Josh Merritt, like, how do you figure it out? Uh, specifically, if you refer to the last couple of races, I think it's really come down to mistakes. You know, Bryce O'Neill just hasn't made them. He's gotten good starts and, and been able to get to the front early when he doesn't get good starts. Today, obviously, getting the whole shot, that's the best you can do. Uh, but he's really managed the race without mistakes. You look at somebody like, you know, I, I think at round one, uh, you know, Josh rode incredibly well and made very few mistakes. Bryson just had a little more pace. You fast forward to round two, it seemed like Walker and Bryson, their pace was very comparable, but Walker made those big mistakes at key mo moments in the race that let Bryson get away, get a comfortable gap, and that was the difference. You know, you fast forward to round three, Bryson, again, getting to the front early, Walker kind of buried back in the pack, having to claw and clamor all day. When he finally gets up there, he's exhausted everything, and now he's out of time. It's the last lap, we're halfway through, he finally catches the leader. It's just at that point, you're just kind of throwing Hail Marys yeah. or whatever term you, you know, throwing threes from half court. You know, you're throwing everything at it. You have no time to strategize. So Bryson really has just executed better racecraft. He's not made the mistakes. He's gotten good starts, and when he doesn't, he's gotten to the front quickly. It's really just better race management and better race strategy. And like we said, the one thing he has said multiple times this season that was still on this checklist was grabbing a whole shot. So now he's got that done too, was first around the first corner. And uh, we knew he had everything that it took to be able to, to do something with it. And, and like we said, the strategy a little different, trying to hit the gas and check out is now trying to check back into the battle for the lead is Walker Fowler and trying to come along with him is Josh Merritt. 
we'll see what is going on. There is There's the 521 Adam McGill, so still right there. They have not shaken him, but it looks like Merritt, you know, by latching onto Fowler has stretched out maybe just a few seconds over McGill there. It was a little bit closer, but uh, McGill looking like he's very much on a charge, and now we've got a left rider back in the mix again. Uh, this is really going to be costly for Josh Merritt, even just those couple seconds there. You can see how much Walker Fowler was able to gap it out there, and Adam McGill closing it back up. Yeah, I was wondering from our camera shots, it looked like those guys had just completely dropped McGill. Not the case. Now McGill will have to battle with our lap traffic right there, get around and try to catch back up with Merritt. Boy, oh, look at the gap now between Merritt and Fowler as they duck back in the woods. Yeah, and that's just it. I mean, one lap rider can, you know, if you don't get around them cleanly, it can be so hard to kind of catch back onto that pace. And it's, it's hard to explain if you haven't been in that position. We talk about the draft, the mental draft, or whatever it may be. You know, you can see somebody in front of you. If you're closing on them, it's such a motivator because you know, like, hey, I'm making ground. I'm closing up on them. This is good. Everything's going my way. The opposite is true. You know, one lap rider gets between, and suddenly you've been right on somebody's kind of rear wheels. Now you see Walker kind of contending with lap traffic, still not able to get around that rider. Now, finally, that rider realizing, hey, this loud noise is a rider going a lot <laughs> faster than me, moving out of the way. But that was a valuable couple seconds that he lost there. Now, Josh Merritt closing the gap back up. And this is the seesaw battle of lap riders, and it really is intense on a race like this, especially, of course, where the woods are tighter, not as many passing opportunities and line options. Josh Merritt getting a little creative there, ducking to the inside of that lap rider as well. Here we see coming into the GBC tires pit stop. We got a little head nod. Yeah, say, I, I, I don't know what that was, but the nod, the nod in. The nod in. It was yeah. the nod in. All right, so here's going to be the uh, the question. Walker Fowler definitely does not have enough gap to maintain the second place position. Josh Merritt already having pitted, uh, he will be giving that position back to Josh. It'll be Josh again back in the number two spot. Adam McGill, we assume, going to pit this lap, and we're assuming Walker Fowler is going to pit. That's going to move Josh Merritt back up to second. It's going to uh, make move Walker Fowler back to third, and Adam McGill will continue to be in fourth where he is. These three have now opened up a pretty substantial gap over John Glauda Jr. in the number five spot, who's being chased pretty hard by Wyatt Wilkin and Stephen Harrell right back there in sixth and seventh place. Yeah, Wyatt Wilkin, I got to think, is in that position of, hey, I just had my first podium. I like that. I want that again. So you know he's going to be pushing through this one. And kind of in that same breath, Merritt. I almost feel like if I were Merritt and I got my first podium and then I see why Will can get it, I think, hey, wait a second. I was the guy that was on the scene that was coming up. I want that position back. So Merritt, a little fire under him today, riding very, very well. And as we expect him to uh, re-inherit, if you will, that second place position after the pit by uh, by Walker Fowler coming up. Well, a little bit of insight into that. You know, Josh obviously came out, started 2024 on fire, second yep. place position, uh, and a solid ride, really, from, from green flag to checkers. Uh, comes out round two in Florida. You know, never really historically done that well there and battled Hunter Hart until halfway through the last lap for that final podium position. You know, the top two were just checked out and gone, uh, but Merritt was in that battle right up until the final miles. Couldn't quite hold on to that podium position, but ending up in the number four spot. There we go, Josh Merritt is by, and now Walker Fowler out in that number three spot, taking a look down, looking like he's gonna put that uh, dry brake cap back on just in case they need to take a splash later. You wanna keep that uh, dry brake receiver clean. And there you see, Josh Merritt is through those chicanes, back into the number two spot. But he, he didn't seem disappointed with that fourth place spot in okay. Florida. You know, I'm sure he, he said, hey man, I gave it everything I had. I, Hunter just had a little more than me down the stretch. I think I might've just pushed a little too hard and wore myself out early. He said, I didn't conserve my energy well and, and I didn't have it. Come to Georgia two weeks or a week later, and Josh Merritt coming out of there with uh, what I believe was a seventh place yeah. overall finish. You know, you could say, well, that's a big drop back from a second and then a fourth. But the reality of it is, at one point in the race, if you looked at the running order, Josh was outside the top 20. Yeah. And I had an opportunity to talk with him. And he said, hey, I just kind of imploded. He said, I, I made so many mistakes. I found myself just charging water holes and destroying my goggles and, you know, all of these things, just trying to work up my way up because I had a bad start. He said, and then, you know, when I really look back at it, a guy like Walker Fowler was behind me and ends up working his way up and getting himself in a position to almost win the race at the end of the race. He said, I know I need to work on my race management, 
but these are things that I'm learning. Yeah. I'm used to yeah. fighting for every single position, every single moment of the race, that's how that's I raced. Good point. And I now like I need to start thinking, hey, I'm a podium guy. If I'm stuck back here in 10th or 15th, I need to methodically plan my way yeah. to the front because I've got the speed, I've got the machine, I've got the conditioning, I can do it, but I need to do it smart. So I'm not tearing up my equipment, not overexerting myself and, and be there at the end of the race. And I think Georgia, as much as it on paper may not look great, I think it was a really interesting learning experience for Josh. And I think what we're seeing today are the fruits of that. Like he's he's really starting to learn his craft and, and getting better each time he hits I, the racetrack. I love that perspective, you know, from, from Josh because he's always kind of, at least these last few seasons struck me as the dude that is, you hear about guys out there, oh, I wanted to key off of this guy and see the lines he's taken. Are we just saying that or do you mean it? And I think Josh is one of those guys that he really does have the pencil and the paper out there. And he takes notes and he just seems to always be learning and, and moving his pro career forward. Because it wasn't, you know, that flashy youth nope. rider that came up that we're all like, oh, this is the next big thing. Nope. He's kind of Wyatt Wilkins, same thing. You know, they really, as an adult, an XC1 pro, said, all right, what can I learn from a guy like Fowler, Neil, uh, Boric, uh, you know, um, Johnny Gallagher. I'll throw you out there, too. You, you may not, you may say no, but it's true. Uh, well, um, actually with Josh, I can, I can, I don't want to say take credit, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I try to help him out as much as I can. But one of the funny things, and we've talked about this before, you know, watching him out there battling in a, in a number two spot. I mean, it's, it's very gratifying for me. He's a local boy from sure. Akron, Ohio. Uh, we live close together. We've ridden together quite a bit over the years, not just at races, but during the week. And uh, Josh will tell you, not so early in his pro career, well into his pro career, you know, hit. I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to tell you the way it was told to me. You know, his dad used to basically, I don't want to say threaten him, but say like, hey, you know, Johnny Gallagher's 40 years old. If, if you can't beat him and you're in the prime of your career in your life, why are we driving all this way to go to these races? And, and Josh would basically say like, dad he's still really good yeah you know and and i think it's hard for people to understand that there is such a mental part to this like yes you have to be fit you have to have a good machine and all those are huge parts of the program and and to be fair josh has upped his game yeah. across the board you know his machine is the best it's ever been he's working with great people his fitness working with uh levi cohen you know a common yep. name that you mentioned with both he and wyatt wilkin mm -hmm. you know levi really a mentor to these guys as well making them physically and mentally tougher but once you get all those parts of the program, like what is the last part of it or a big part of it? Yep. Mental. Mental. Like for the sure. approach and the thought process. Thanks for coming to our TED Talks, everybody at home. We're finding the stories here because <laughs> Bryce and Neil is a minute 43. Call it a minute 44 up on the rest of the pack because we see him entering the monster mile and quickly exiting it, making it look like the monster quarter mile. He's... He is absolutely trucking on rails. And and it's one of those things where when things are going your way, even the lappers seem to be just kind of yeah. parting the seas for Bryson. And you can see Josh, Adam, Walker all seemingly to struggle to get through lappers in some of these sections. And, and it's difficult to, you know, to say. But when things are going your way, you can almost do no wrong. And when they're not, you can just seemingly do nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah. We look back and it uh, looks like we have seen our leaders in that XC2 class check in. No, no still not. Thought we had them checked in there. Uh, the heck of a battle going on there between Tavin Cook, Grayson Eller, and Braxton Gross, all uh, separated by less than 20 seconds there. The top three when they checked in with two laps complete. We are waiting for them now to come in and complete lap number three. Still the battle on screen. Uh, Josh Merritt has second place. Bryson Neal has marched away. Uh, Mike, you said a minute and 43 yeah. seconds. So increasing that again, another 45 seconds from a lap ago. So really just stretching it out over these guys now. And Neil's so methodical, just the way the way he goes about it. You know, he's not he's not pushing. Honestly, at this point, a win is a win for for B. Neal. Let's leave the race hole with the machine in good condition. Whereas the old Bryson Neal would be pushing for that five minute gap <laughs> going 100 miles an hour. But man, he has found a way to harness that speed. You notice what we're seeing here. The 521 of Adam McGill has lost a little bit of ground. Looks like Fowler has been able to catch almost to the rear wheels of Josh Merritt now. And McGill needing to make haste and get on the hammer. He does not want to lose the draft of those two riders in front of him. Has been riding incredibly well through the first three laps. 
if he wants to keep himself in a podium position, he needs to keep pushing. Here's the guy that's in second right now, number five of Merritt. You can see still on the hammer, but not seven seconds like it was at the finish line, more like about three seconds. Wow. Walker Fowler closing up the gap. And got to think at this point, Fowler, if he wants any chance of, of even remotely trying to show a wheel, you've got to drop the hammer now. Yeah. Like he's out of time, he's got to go. And so there we see McGill on screen. Not out of this thing yet either, though. Only, only a second or so back, uh, just outside of eyesight from Walker Fowler. So another nice thing is some of the some of this track gives you a little more open area to try to come in, talk a little, or see a little bit more, find out exactly what uh, where you are compared to the competition. And uh, do a little bit of gauging, if that makes sense. When, when you're able to see somebody in front of you, even if it's a significant gap, it still gives you a little motive. Hey, I'm not out of this, right? If I can see him, there is a chance something can go wrong, lap or bottleneck, something like that. So. Uh, Gator not out of this thing yet. No, absolutely not. I mean, he's right there. And look at this. Speaking of right there, Wyatt Wilkin right there in that number six position, right behind the 712 of John Glauda Jr. So that's five and six as they run. Last we saw, it was the number eight of Stephen Harrell there in the number seven spot. Has not come through here at the two mile marker, but it was a little bit of a gap back. 21 seconds he was behind. So we'll be watching him come through here in just a little bit. We are still waiting and watching. Looks like we may have our leader now checked in in XC2, and it is back to the front, the number 223 of Braxton Gross, grabbing the whole shot, and uh, I'll be honest, kind of expecting him to check out, and then dropping way back in the field there the first two laps, maybe having to get some things figured out, figured out but back to the number one spot with Grayson Eller, 0.8 seconds behind, so that is a battle going on in XC2. Yeah, that definitely is the, uh, the battle to watch, if you will, on course. But uh, yeah, until then, uh, right now we got a little bit of little bit of time up front, about a minute and 43, 44 seconds now. Bryson Neal out front, and uh, taking a look at some of the action we have had on screen. There is Merritt and Fowler duking it out. Josh running that preferred line. Walker never scared to try to find some new real estate to make a pass happen. And uh, there you see McGill just on the outside looking in, trying to close this gap up, see if maybe he can show these guys a wheel as well. But right now, Fowler needs to make the move, needs to make his way around if he wants any chance. There we go. As they duck back off into the woods. So Fowler gets around. Now, we did see after this, he had that pit stop. But has already started to close back in to try to get around. There we see Merritt hanging tough, riding very smart as well, not panicking. Probably was getting told, hey, these guys are in a different pit strategy. McGill in the mix as well. And then here we see the pit. Fowler already in at the top of your screen. There goes Merritt by. McGill tucks in his pit as well. And then on our most recent shot, there you see Merritt was back around for second. And there is Walker Fowler. Just like Johnny said, a lot less like second seconds, a lot more like two or three. And the Gator trying to close back in on that lost a little bit of time. But we're going to get a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back to see how things wrap up here from the FMF Camp Coker GNCC. You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Well, you shouldn't have that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related, so... Ah, mm. Oh, that is a vibrating pain. you choose to see it when you crave the long canyons rocky trails rutted tracks and lonely highways they become a part of you podiums and personal records we choose it all 
because life is about moving and feeling. It's about being connected to the adventure. Some just never pull the trigger. They keep waiting, wondering what it means to wander. It's a big world out there. You just need to ride where you belong. Whatever you drive, however you drive. Ames Oil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles. So you can work hard and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. And hello, everybody. Welcome back to round four, the FMF Camp Coker Bullet here in Society Hill, South Carolina. And uh, Bryson has already made his way through this camera shot. So the Bidwell Bullet shooting off. He's gone. That was a bullet sound for those at home. There it was. Was it a ricochet or, or a shot? I, I, wouldn't it be like... It was kind of like when it comes by you, like you, okay. you heard right, a gunshot right. and yep. you're a little too like close it. and it like like goes it. by you. Whizzing, I yeah, believe. Whizzing, is, yes, thank is you. the term you're looking for. Yes, absolutely. And and when we... He's uh, a high caliber round, so, you know, he comes by in a hurry. When we get to the point where Bryson Neal has a minute and 43 seconds, we have to talk about terms like whizzing and bullets yes. and reverberance. Uh, on screen, Walker Fowler has gotten around Josh Merritt for the number two spot. And uh, there, Josh Merritt in the number three spot. Don't see Adam McGill back there yet. We see some, uh, actually, shout out. That's the uh, Red Bear Rocky Mountain ATBMC team owner uh, there on screen, J.D. Higgins himself, looking like he's going to take a look over his shoulder and say, uh-oh, oh, Walker Fowler and Josh Merritt, I'm going to get out of the way. I don't want any part of this. But uh, out there doing battle in that Vet B class, I believe it is. There we see Adam McGill in the background. So that gap has very much opened up. Uh, right now, the pace that Walker Fowler and Josh Merritt setting have distanced themselves from the 521 of Adam McGill. We're uh, joined in booth here in our Racer TV studios with uh, someone we'd much rather see out on the course, uh, Hunter Hunter Hart joining us. We uh, we checked in with you a little bit ago, Hunter. Sounded like you said you had some steering issues, uh, not able to turn left, not able to turn right, but uh, you know, obviously not where you want to be, but uh, give us a little rundown on exactly what happened there on lap one and, and how you ended up here with us. Yeah, you know, um, Ne never ideal to be talking to you guys this uh, this early in the race. Um, no, I was, you know, Bryson and I were, were rolling right off the rip, and uh, we got into the tight stuff, and, you know, uh, we were just kind of go going through the motions, and uh, I went to turn. It was uh, it was a right-hander into a left-hander, and I went right, and then I went to turn left, and then the next thing I knew, I kind of just, uh, the bike just flipped on me. I went hopped up. The bars were uh, crooked, and I went to turn, and I couldn't... Uh, I couldn't seem to go. Couldn't seem to go left. Couldn't seem to go right. Luckily, the train track ruts were kind of holding me in, so I thought I I was good through there. And then uh, I just ended up getting a spot, and the, the front end actually completely de, uh, separated from the the handlebars, and that was that was where it sat. Luckily, GNCC had some awesome employees come out, pick me up, and uh, got me back. So now I'm here talking to you guys about a race. So obviously a broken steering component leaving you out of the race today, but you you did get a uh, firsthand uh, view of the course. What are, what are these guys facing out there today? Obviously a very dry racetrack when we arrived here on Thursday you know how are things looking after the rain and, and what kind of shape is this Camp Coker uh, facility in? Man dude it was it was prime you know the uh, the little bit that I did get to see you know uh, this morning on the race and then yesterday when I biked the track uh, it was it was prime you know it was it was looking to be one heck of a track um, you know the, the conditions were great you know GNCC had done a phenomenal job getting some some serious passing lines opened up out there uh, the woods here allow for a lot of that other than from about the four to the four to the seven is pretty pretty one line other than that though a lot of the woods are, are multi-line and uh, just like you see with the battle on screen right now there is a line that's a split line inside outside there if we watch from the drone shot a lot of this through here you've got two lines that you're able to merge 
merged throughout, a lot of outsides, and they're pretty pretty close. You know, you're able to split through. I know coming up here we're going to see a outside line that's actually pretty smooth. I'm, I bet you Walker will probably either start using that or if the inside's right here. Yep. So that outside's actually pretty smooth. I'm surprised none of those guys took it. Um, and it just, this track allows for a lot of good passing and good racing, just the, just the way it's built, the, the way the property is. And, you know, it's it's a very sandy soil, but it's a bigger, it's a, it's a more granulant type soil with some bigger rocks in it than uh, the Florida style sand. Yeah, they, uh, a lot of people refer to this as like a silica type stand, sand, larger granules like you were talking about uh, than, than what the beach sand is down in Florida. Uh, but man, I got to tell you, Josh Merritt, uh, again, this is the second time now that Walker Fowler has gotten around him or he let Walker around and uh, able to latch in both times and, and just kind of catch the pace. Right now, just kind of ride the wave of the pace that Walker's putting down. Uh, you know, talk a little bit about, obviously, when you're when you're out there racing and, and you're kind of having to read the trail and you're the one setting the pace, you're using a lot of energy. Sometimes if you just get tucked in behind somebody like Josh is right now, you really can save a lot. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you can tuck in and be the one to follow, you know, man, you're, you're letting them do all the work. They're hitting the, they're hitting the holes first. You know, you can be like, if somebody hits a hole in front of you, you can be like, oh, move over two, three inches one direction and it's a lot smoother. Uh, this section we're watching on screen right now is uh, one heck of a split lane. There's two two sets of rows, basically, and they're, they're straight shots, so you can pick whichever one you want. The whoops are deep through there. They're about uh, knee deep through the whole section, and they uh, that, that section I would, wouldn't be surprised if we see some good passing towards the end of the day. There you go, starting to get rough through those pines, but Bryce and Neil making it look pretty easy. Uh, looking like he's on rails out there. Oh, a little wild. Getting, getting a little kick get, there. Getting into the track markers, but uh, staying stay the course and staying in the throttle, straightening it out, back on the hammer. Uh, we go back here to this battle for the number two spot. Walker Fowler on the 723 machine. Josh Merritt there in the number three spot just behind him. Lapped riders looking like they're really thick. And again, these guys about two minutes-ish back from your leader we just saw on screen, the number one Phoenix Racing Yamaha of Bryce and Neil. Neil, you know, at this point, this gap you, you, earlier in the show zach you asked the question you said at what point is a gap comfortable and i said well once you get to two minutes you know you're, you're pretty comfortable i mean a minute 42 43 it was last lap he's getting to that point where he's getting very comfortable at this point you're kind of starting to watch pit boards um if you see that gap stable or continuing to grow you know each lap you're able maybe to just back down the intensity just a tiny little bit talked about it earlier in the, in the show Bryson Neal not at that point where he feels like he needs to go out and win by five minutes you know to win by two seconds or five minutes the points are still the same they still give you a 30 and uh, he knows that two-time and defending champion uh, working on what would be four straight wins here in in 2024 and uh, going back to his win at the end of, of 2023 would be five in a row uh, he mentioned it in the pre-race show said he's never won four in a row wasn't able to do that last year uh, and looking to do that today so that could be another uh, thing to tick off in his personal uh, goals list I guess if you will talking about how he was not known as a mud rider getting that one done at the last had a personal goal to get a whole shot uh, got that done today and then four wins in a row potentially uh, on the docket for him here today and you know, Hunter, I'm sure when, you know, as a racer, you never want to hear anybody else have, have, not that you don't want to hear them having success, but you want to be the guy being talked about. But as a guy who's got everything going for him right now, we, we've talked about it. Bryson Neal seeming like he can do no wrong. You know, I'll let you put it in your words. How has your 2024 been as far as expectations versus reality so far? If he can do no wrong, I seem to be able to do no right. And that's, I, I didn't want to put those words in, in your mouth, but I know, you know, obviously we, we all follow you on Instagram. A lot of work came into this 2024 season. A lot of racing still left. I mean, this is round four. It's a 13-round series. We still have nine rounds of racing remaining. The season isn't over. The championship isn't over. But what do you do? What's the mindset? What's the kind of, what's the new goal or same goal as the old goal? What do you do moving forward? I mean, at this point, you know, we, uh, I don't know, you know, I, um, you know, there's, there's seriously. Well, no well it's, it's, now. it's just, it's just happened. So you've got some time, but at some point, you know, you'll go back. I'm sure you'll, con, con, uh, you know, confer with the team around you and figure out, hey, you know, what do we need to do with, with me, with the machine, with the mindset? You know, you've been a, a perennial contender here for race wins and championships. Obviously, 2024 not starting off the way you wanted. We hate to have you in here in the booth today. Not, not that we don't love having you here. We'd rather be watching you out there battling. But uh, I can say that I have no doubt that sooner than later, we'll be talking about you on podiums and, and winning races rather than sitting in here in the booth telling us, hey, not the day we were looking for. So definitely keep that chin up and uh, 
we look forward to seeing you back out there battling again soon. Yeah, I, uh, we, we were in a great position today. You know, we had opened up a little bit of a gap, and, uh, you know, it uh, just, hey, it wasn't, it wasn't our day, you know. There was, there was a reason it had to happen, and uh, I don't know the reason for it today, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's called racing, you know. It's, uh, it's called racing. If, if it was winning, everybody would do it. But when it's racing, you got to go out there and you got to prove it week in and week out. On screen, this battle we're looking at, Hunter, you know, Josh Merritt there in the number three spot, a rider who's really kind of newer to the front of the pack here, really at the end of last season or halfway through last season, started seeing him consistently in the top five. Uh, you know, how exciting is it from a fan standpoint to see new riders throwing themselves in the mix, you know, for podium positions and, and potentially working their way up towards a win? Yeah, you know, for sure for Josh, I think he'd be working on his third podium here today. Um, it's 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 untried territory, you know. I remember him and I went out and did a West Coast race one time, and it came down to the last lap for a podium position. And uh, he said to me, he goes, Hunter, dude, he goes, I, I didn't know I didn't know what to do in the last lap. I'd never been in that position before, and um, I feel like that's something that he's he's dealing with, you know. Is he's he's slowly learning, and it's and it's a different feeling from that four to four to eight to that that one to three. Um, it's it's somewhere you just have to be. You know, and, and you don't forget once you're there, you know, but it takes a while to get there. Like today, you know, it was just uh, systems go. And, um, you know, as you're watching, I, I'm impressed that Walker, um, or a little surprised, I should say, that Walker hasn't, you know, started to track her away from him like Walker can in the sand. And, um, you know, I think that that leads to how how rough the track is getting. You know, like, I mean, just watch this section right here, like that section, like those are just, those are holes. And if you watch the body position difference between Josh and Walker, Walker was a much more outside rider through that whole section where Josh was kind of in the center of the ruts. And uh, Josh is more on the seat where Walker's kind of a more hover through the whole position of the track as well. Yeah, Josh looking like, uh He's on a mission right now, though, looking like he wants to stay with Walker Fowler. And I got to believe that his goal is, you know, he can see that they're opening up a gap over Adam McGill there in the number four spot. Of course, Josh Merritt wants to win this race. Josh Merritt wants to get around Walker Fowler. But we all talk about it and we know it. I mean, a podium is thank the sponsors. It's there's just a little more pep in your step going home after a podium than when you close it out in that fourth place spot. I mean, you came home in that number four spot at round one, you know, and it's, uh, oh, sorry, number five spot at round one. But you've been there, you know, it's like, it, in a way, fourth is almost the worst position because especially when you're close, Bryce and Neil on screen, stopping again for another splash of gas. Splash. And, and, you know, this really just speaks to the confidence of the team to know that, hey, we've got a, a big, comfortable lead. Let's go ahead and take a splash. We don't want to run this thing close on fuel. Uh, he did stop with two laps complete, so now he's stopped again, meaning he has more than enough fuel to complete what should be the last lap of racing here. We should see a white flag waving when he checks in now with four laps complete here in a matter of just about 10 seconds. And now I will say for, for all the fans at home, obviously not hoping that this happens or anything like that, but we have seen, we saw a two minute gap today on the final lap disappear in the four x four pro race. So it can be done. Uh, obviously tough luck there for Cody Collier. Gotta give him a shout out. He, he was able to come across the finish line. Glad to see he was healthy because I had heard he had a big get off. But nonetheless, we thought it was a done deal. Jackson and I are up waiting for him at the finish line. Then all of a sudden, I believe it was Cole Likens, comes through out of nowhere and grabs the overall win in that AMA TV race. So just when you think it's all over, Camp Coker can jump up and bite you. So watch out the, the bullet, trying not to, to get hit by the bullet, if you will, here from Camp Coker. But right now, they're in perfect harmony as he is working his way towards what we believe will be a white flag. Well, interesting there on the lap times. Bryce Neal running a 24.56 on lap number three. Lap number four, 25.36. So slowing down 40 seconds. Uh, but I don't think that we're going to see that gap really tighten up much, if at all. I think that just speaks to how much thicker the lappers are getting, how much rougher the course is getting, uh, as great a shape as these guys are in. Sometimes it's just tough to maintain that flow. The, the rougher the track gets and... Once you start to get deeper into lappers, you just can't carry that same speed to stay on top. Hunter, you were talking a little bit about that kind of hovering position, uh, trying to let the bike absorb the the bike and your legs absorb the roughness. Uh, whereas, you know, when you're when you're going slower, talk a little bit about that. How, how different it is? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, that's uh, that's a big thing that a lot of people underestimate. They think that if you're sitting down and just kind of like riding the bike through these sections, that it's going to save you more energy, but it's not. You know, if you can go, a, a, you know, 10% faster in a section, you can get the bike to just work so much better because you're able to kind of attack the track and just get on top of the whoops instead of feeling every bump on the track. You almost can wheelie over them a little bit more and just, you know, allow for your body and your bike to, you know, take a little more of a beating, but a little bit smoother of a beating, if that makes sense. And one thing I think that a lot of folks at home watching or people that aren't, you know, uh, super involved in GNCC racing or 
automotive or, or power sports racing, setup is becomes so important when you talk about things like that because these guys, the guys you're watching on screen, Bryson Neal, Walker Fowler, Josh Merritt, these bikes are set up incredibly stiff. They're made to go fast. They're made to hit things at a high rate of speed. If you don't understand what we're talking about, you have to stiffen things up. Look at this Josh Merritt now coming in for another splash of fuel. So he was on that two-lap strategy the first time, taking a look over his shoulder and trying to figure out just where Adam McGill is and what the gap is back. Walker Fowler now working his way through the chicanes in what will be a white flag waving. Bryson Neal already checked in. We'll refresh our live timing and scoring once these two check in and see exactly what the gaps are back. But again, the average rider's bike setup, if these top XC1 riders tried to ride it and go this fast, they would be bottomed out and bouncing everywhere, and vice versa, if you took the average you know, B-class rider and put them on an XC1 fast, XC1 rider setup, they would say, hey, there's something wrong with this bike, the shocks don't move. Uh, so when you get kind of stuck behind those lapped riders and your, your pace starts to slow down, the bike is literally just jackhammering your hands and beating your lower back, everything. You're just taking an absolute beating, almost like there's no suspension on the machine at all. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I mean, like, uh, I can even feel, you know, like, if, if you're stuck behind a slow rider, your bike feels rough. Like, you can't you can't attack a section like you'd like to. And that's where, you know, I, I think what we're going to see here with, on screen with Walker is he's got a clear track ahead of him. He's going to be able to put his head down and just charge through these sections like he, he wants to. You know, a clear track. He's, you know, got a fresh pair of Scott goggles on, and he's ready to go. Um, that's just one of the big things that a lot of people underestimate is that they like to follow. And there's two different styles. You know, Chris Boric, you know, he was the king of following and just an attack at the end of the day. Um, you know, where a couple people, they like to lead from the front. Walker was a lead from the front type of guy. He didn't want anybody near him at the end. And, you know, that's just different styles of personality and the way they like to race. Well, our top three now have checked in. We wait for Adam McGill to check in in the number four spot. But, oh, Andy has now checked in. Top three checked in. Two minutes, 33 seconds is the gap that Bryson Neal holds over Walker Fowler in the number two spot. Another 15 and a half seconds back to Josh Merritt in the number three spot. And then what looking like will be possibly a three-way battle for those final two podium positions. Uh, again, it is Walker Fowler with 15 and a half seconds over Josh Merritt. Then another 45.1 seconds back to Adam McGill. So right now, Merritt having about 47, five seconds to play with to hold on to that final podium position. Or will he push the pace, close the gap up to Walker Fowler and try to wrestle back away that number two spot that he really has occupied throughout much of the race act. Yeah, I can't help but think that Merritt's going to want a little little slice of that second place, right? He's going to want to put in a fight for it towards the end. Uh, the question is whether or not he's going to be able to close the gap back up, just like we were saying earlier. When you got another rider to kind of tandem off of, go back and forth, you're able to keep that pace up. But right now, Merritt's kind of by himself. He doesn't have McGill just behind him to be pushing forward. And he doesn't have Walker directly in front of him to kind of chase after. So we'll see where the, the personal pace is for Merritt and whether he'll be able to close that back up to the back of Fowler. Absolutely. Time will tell. We're working down. We're now started the final lap. Hunter, as we look here and we see the track, obviously, from this Yamaha Racing Live drone, now we're ahead to the uh, the Monster Mile. Bryce Neal with an outside line around a lap rider there. Two miles in. We see the lap time slowing down dramatically. We, we mentioned uh, Bryce and Neal dropping from a 24.50 all the way down to a 25.40. So a 40, 40 to 50 second drop in lap time. But then looking at Josh Merritt and Walker Fowler, they dropped off even more. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Are, are we looking at a track that's getting rough? Do you think it's lap riders, combination of all the above? Man, you know, I mean, it's it's a lot of things. You know, these these lappers, they do a great job of moving when they can. But, I mean, there's, like I said earlier, that, that four to that six is, is so tight that it's, it's it's hard to make a pass. Like if you caught a lapper in there, I mean, you could you could lose minutes. Like I remember, you know, last year here, Junior and I, we we caught a lapper in that same section, and, and he tagged a tree, and I mean that's that's 40 seconds right there just for him to get off his bike, move his bike over, and there's not much passing in there, and um, that's where you can see, you know, it's it's uh, it's truly a game of chess, it, where you're going to catch him and where you don't. You know, like if, if Walker got one going in the section and Josh didn't, you could see that gap open up there as well, and vice versa. And you talked a little bit about that yourself on lap one when you had your issue with your machine. You said you were kind of stalled out in a tight section, stuck there and uh, cause a little bottleneck of your own? Man, I mean, yeah, unfortunately, Oops. I, uh, yeah, you know, it uh, literally just stopped and I uh, just sucked into the tree roots there and I couldn't uh, couldn't go anywhere. And uh, that's actually what caused Braxton to lose the, lose the XC2 lead early on there. Uh, glad to see he's back in the lead. And uh, yeah, you know, unfortunately, you just, it, it happens, you know. So how many sorry buddies were exchanged <laughs> between you and Braxton when, uh, I'm sure you were obviously upset about um, about your machine, but at the same time, I know Braxton, the current leader in our XC2 class, we have talked about him a little bit uh, with a big margin of win there at uh, round number two in Florida, kind of a sand specialist traveling all the way from California. Uh, and 
Today, though, heavy pressure from behind, at least when they checked in last lap, he did have a lot of pressure from behind from Grayson Eller, only eight tenths of a second behind him. So Grayson on a mission to try to grab that win and back up the win he got in Georgia. Uh, but any any words exchanged between you and Braxton there? Man, I uh, I think I said to him, I go, I'm so sorry, buddy. And he's like, buddy, I just need to go. Um, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about it. He's actually riding back to Florida with me tonight. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk Did you help him there. get his bike oh, out? Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm right. stuck, you know, so I picked up the front I, end. I thought maybe you just sit there know? and watched him. Or no. like, yeah, sorry, buddy, I'm no, broke. Yeah. yeah. No, heck no. I, hey, uh, who's buying dinner tonight? Yeah. He's like, hey, can we talk about this later? Maybe. Yeah, yeah you know, Braxton's buying. If he wins, he's buying. All know? right. We didn't make enough. any money. He's going to earn more money than you yeah, today as long yeah. as he ends up on that XC, uh, XC2 podium. That's but right. uh, Walker Fowler on screen, I believe that's Walker Fowler. Uh, yeah, he's got to buy dinner. He already got a whole shot award. Uh, that's so. right. He got that, that whole shot award. Yes, that is Walker Fowler there in the number two spot. Let me ask you guys, throughout the, the course of a race, four, five, six laps, whatever it ends up being, do you guys see the tracks deteriorate at a consistent rate, or do you usually see, like, the difference between lap two and three is the biggest difference when you come back around? Three and four, okay. So so how one and two, I'm assuming, probably not that bad? I, I mean, I, Hunter, I, you can speak to this. I'll give it quickly. It, it's crazy to me, you know, when we start on lap one, uh, when I was racing the afternoon, it, for all those years. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's fun. Like, and, and you'll hear the guys from the morning talk about, like, oh, the track got really rough. And lap one for us is was their last lap. And I'm thinking, dude, that's smooth. And knowing in my head, like, how you race a lot of these properties over and over, but it seems to me that it goes from, you know, a little bit bad on, on lap two and three to by the time you get to four and five, there's just this dramatic, because you've got maybe more riders in the morning, but I think the riders in the afternoon as a whole are a little harder on the throttle, move a little more dirt, and things really start to get deep. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I would say, too, uh, you know, between laps three and four, the bottom usually falls out. Like, Florida was Florida was like that, you know. And, and on these sandier tracks, you know, the dirt's not pretty uh, consistent and predictable. Where in these sandier tracks, you know, the, the, rut, the lines change so quickly that you just have to, you know, plan for what you want and just, you know, execute. So there we go, guys. You're hearing it from two experts in the field, getting a look at the Gator off screen at the Monster Mile. We are going to catch a word from our sponsors, and we will be back here in just a few, taking a look. If you haven't already, this is what you guys have missed so far. There's Walker Fowler making it back around Josh Merritt. Josh stopping for another pit stop, getting a splash of fuel, trying to bring this thing all the way to the finish. We get a great shot of them courtesy of that Yamaha Racing Live drone making their way through one of the open sections. And I'm telling you what, Walker Fowler is ready to put up a fight. But this guy right now, pew, that's the bullet sound that we're doing all day long. The Bidwell bullet trying to bring home the bullet at the end of this. But Walker Fowler, if you got a champ, you got to have a challenger. And that's exactly what we've got from Fowler headed in, looking for a white flag soon. We're going to hear from our sponsors, and we'll be back. This is the FMF Camp Coker Bullet GNCC. Unleash aggression, reliability. Premium quality with Kinda Tires. Delivering exceptional performance on all types of vehicles. Automotive, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, bicycles, trailers, lawn and garden, and even golf. Trust Kinda Tires to guide you on your next adventure. Kinda, designed for your journey. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic. Comedic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Comedic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best inside their engine. Comedic Gaskets are always constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environments. Whether it's a championship on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts alike depend on Comedic. Comedic Gasket, sealing championships since 1989. seven-time GNCC champion Walker Fowler, and I run GBC. Second. Like a bullet into the first turn, the number one with the pink helmet and pink bars. It is Walker Fowler, the seventh. Devin Feehan, what a ride today. I'm Devin Feehan, and I run GBC. I'm Josh Merritt. 
and I run GBC. I'm Chris Borch, and I run, and I run, I run GBC. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You could save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. B. Neal, the Bidwell Bullet, trying to get the job done at the Camp Coker Bullet, the FMF Camp Coker Bullet. Let's call it what it is. Uh, absolutely rolling right now is Bryson Neal, trying to be a perfect four for four to start the season. And uh, another guy who is having a, uh, a red-hot day here is Braxton Gross, our rider. Runs the Work Series out on the West Coast, a rider out of uh, Romano, California. Grabbing the win and, last uh, weekend at the yeah. Havasu overall in the pro class. Uh, just stellar, obviously great in the sand um, and uh, doing well here today. And we actually had a chance to uh, catch up with him for a little bit uh, prior to today's race. For those at home that aren't aware, Braxton, you're coming from California over on the West Coast. Talk about how different the conditions are from where you grew up and what you're used to riding to what you see now at GNCC. Yeah, I mean, at home, it's like, it's all, I mean, it's probably a dozer, dozer, half uh, blade width. It's all wide stuff. It's fast. And here, I mean, I like this stuff a lot. I like just like the slow down pace. It's it's more my style for sure, but it's different. It's a learning curve, but I'm digging it. I love it so far. Now, we talked about it before, uh, two top tie finishes, one being a win, a pretty st strong start to 2024. You're in this points battle. What are you thinking right now? Like I said before, don't do anything dumb. Just keep, keep consistency up. And, I mean, as long as my bike doesn't break, I know we're going to have a good season. Braxton Gross coming into round three with high hopes for a strong 2024. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty cool story, and, and we've talked about it before. Uh, if you joined us here on Racer TV, uh, Braxton Gross, actually his uh, sister, Gwendolyn Gibson, uh, the top U.S. mountain biker in the World Cup That's rankings right, yeah, right yeah. now in the UCI World Cup. Now, this is the beyond the G, not even beyond, but it is the top level of mountain bike cross-country racing in the world. She travels all over the world, uh, factory track racing. Uh, the top-ranked American at the moment, I believe. Uh, the standings are always changing, um, but I believe she is the top-ranked American, and, you know, just a phenomenal story. Uh, Braxton's parents out there here in the woods of South Carolina today watching. Uh, Gwendolyn, last I knew, somewhere in Puerto Rico, racing her, bi oh, her, killer. her bicycle, getting ready for the UCI races to start here uh, coming up end of next month. And, uh, yeah, what a talented family. A lot of hard work goes into that, and uh, very, very cool to see Braxton out here doing what he's doing. Again, foreign territory for him yeah. a west coast desert kid from ramona california if you've ever been there it's like the farm ranch country of california okay. uh, up in the hills above san diego and uh couldn't be anything further from from what he's out here <laughs> racing and winning in today and a very very dominant performance at round two in florida cool to see him backing it up and and uh yeah right up in there in the mix for the points championship and he it's one of those things he and his father kyle have talked about hey we want to race gncc we love works racing but this is where our heart's at. We want to come be here. But what a commitment to travel across oh, the country. Sure. They've made friends. You know, this isn't uh, a situation where they have a ton of support. Right. And, you know, they have, like, a rig out here and everything. They have friends hauling the bike from race to race. It kind of changes each round. Uh, they show up. They wash and prep the bike here at the track to get it ready to go for the day. Uh, Walker Fowler on screen there in the number two spot. Does not look like Josh Merritt behind him. That was a couple of lapped riders. See Walker taking a lot of looks over his shoulder on camera. We saw him do that over at the two mile marker as well. I think just taking a look back to see where's Josh, where's Adam. At this point, I think Walker's kind of given up, not given up, but knows that the wind not in the cards today unless something goes very sideways for Bryson. So doing the smart thing, just kind of managing the gap. And there is the gap. There is the number wow. five of Josh Merritt in the number three spot, solidly in a podium position. Last we saw, 45 seconds was the gap back to Adam McGill in the number four spot. Josh still looking very strong, riding aggressively, charging, 
looking very fit and that uh, that machine looking like it's really doing work. So what's next for Josh Merritt here? Obviously, you know, the podiums are great, uh, but it's racing. It's all about what have you done for me lately? If you're talking to Merritt, is it, hey, great job today? Here's what you can do or maybe change this up to get up a little closer to Walker and a Bryson pace. No, or do you I say think you're doing, doing exactly doing what you everything need to do. Exactly okay. right. I, I'm sure a lot of people would disagree with me. You, you talk with somebody like Caleb Russell, and you know he has that <laughs> sure. he has that dog in him, you know, yeah. and, and you want to win every race. And, and I agree. You know, if the wind is there, you need to go for it. You need to lay all your cards out. But right now, Josh is building. He's putting down a foundation to be able to do exactly what he's doing today, week in and week out. And I believe that to become a here's Adam McGill, the number four spot. Uh, again, a great ride for the yep. Gator today. Good ride. Uh, hold, holding it down for the. Uh, uh, I, I don't think he's 40 plus yet, but the late <laughs> no. 30 plus crowd. Uh, Chris Borch, I think the, the only guy out there in the 40 plus yeah. crew in that XC1 class. But uh, McGill, still great ride here today. Uh, really turning back the clock, up battling for a podium throughout much of the race. But no, I think if you're Josh Merritt, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, I do believe he needs to continue to gain more experience running at the front, like Hunter was talking about. You know, the first couple times you get up there, I, I can tell you from experience. The first couple times you're in a podium position late in a race, like you, you almost don't want to know. Like you just want to oh, ride yeah. your race. The minute you realize, hey, this is a podium, hey, this is a win, everything kind of starts happening fast. It's so easy to make those mistakes. But when you get to a position where a guy like Bryce O'Neill is, a guy like Walker Fowler, Hunter Hart, Adam McGill, that it, you've done it so many times, you have that muscle memory and that brain memory just to go back to and say, okay, this is what we do. This is how we handle this, and this is how we get it to the finish line. I think the more times Josh Merritt puts himself in this position, it never becomes easier, but it just takes a little bit less effort and a little bit less stress to maintain it, and I think that's where he's getting to be. I mean, this, again, would be his only, his third ever podium position. Third yeah. ever in his career. So I don't think, you know, you do you want to try to win the next race? Of course. But to win, you need to be in a podium position. Right. And he just needs to keep doing that week in and week out. Yeah, certainly. So, hey, all right. You got you got the uh, the thumbs up from Johnny Gallagher, Josh Merritt. I like it, too. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say he needs to do this or that. I think he's doing stellar. And uh, uh, one last thing I will say on that. I've, I've talked about how, no. with Josh, how you should – you know, and I think anyone should do this in anything you do, whether it's your career, um, you know, whether it's a, a recreational sport that you do. If you want to improve, if you want to get better, you have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. So take pride in what you've just done when you have a good day. Oh, yeah. But also look back and say, hey, yeah, maybe I got third place today. But sure, what could I have done if I want okay. to bridge that gap just a little bit? But it's it doesn't need to be big jumps. It can be something as simple as, you know, hey, I, I really kind of messed up on my hydration strategy during the week or whatever it is. You need to analyze things and, and try to learn from each experience, both winning and losing. Uh, when you're doing well, focus on the things that you were doing. Do more of that. When you're yeah. doing not so well, do less of these things. Okay. It's, yeah, it, it makes it's sense. pretty simple. <laughs> it is. It is. It, it, when you break it down, when you get that fine and you start breaking things up. Well, obviously, when you have success, it's easier to look at the things of, hey, if I want to continue this, I didn't do well here, here, and here. Let me work on those little things, and it just kind of builds on itself. Bryson Neal leading it, trying to go a perfect four for four to start the season. Uh, and I think I heard you guys talking about this. I don't believe he did that last year, winning four in a row. Uh, according to his interview and, and what I know, I don't know that he's ever won okay. four in a row. I, I don't I, think I, I so either. Wrong. Uh, I know he won a lot of races yeah. last year. Uh, but he himself said, hey, I want to do what we didn't do last year, yeah. and that's win four either in a row or four to start the season. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, definitely – uh, new territory for him winning yeah. the first four races and five straight if you go yep. back to Iron Man in 2023 and all systems go firing on all cylinders all the cliches you can come up with <laughs> they all match up to this guy right now and, and pretty, be pretty much unstoppable for, for his competition at least today yeah he has and uh, capturing uh, okay so he has done four in a row 2022 from what was that camp coger to the mason dixon yep. so there you go so that okay. but that go all the way back to 2022 sure uh you didn't know, do it last year yeah so. you okay. you want to you want to win every time you yeah. go on a course uh it, but you know you when you get in a position where bryce neal is you kind of start setting these small goals for yourself and and i think you know the whole shot was one you could check that off today uh, winning the mud race, we saw how enthusiastic and excited he was two weeks ago. Yeah. And, and he said, hey, man, people doubt me in the mud today. I proved them all wrong. And in my head, I'm thinking, 
really this guy feels like he has something left to prove, but good for him because sometimes when everything's going your way, it would be easy to become complacent and yeah. rest on your laurels. But uh, he just keeps driving himself forward. 100%. I know B. Neal is, is an NBA fan, and I know uh, we've talked a little bit, he and I, about the last dance with Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls. And J Michael Jordan would come up with these scenarios in his head that he would tell people are real, where a guy had a chip on his shoulder about something completely made up and it was simply to motivate himself maybe b neal's got a little bit of uh michael jordan in him and, and has that same mindset of i gotta come up with something to continue challenging myself yeah i don't know man i i, I get that and i watched the last dance and and you know there, it, michael jordan is a great athlete and that was a dynasty and he uh, is a crazy person yeah but <laughs> it, i don't know i've just never I, i've not won nearly as much as michael jordan or bryson neal but uh, I just don't get the whole, like, manufacture your own drama yeah, in your own mind. But, hey, whatever it takes. Well, <laughs> I, I much prefer the idea of, like, Bryson Neal setting goals. And there saying, you go. Like, okay. Hey, I want to win four in a row. You know, I remember um, – and, and this, well, let's even throw it to Supercross. Probably most of our fans yeah. are crossover. You know, Jet Lawrence saying at, I believe it was round uh, one this year. I'll win until I'm bored with it? No, <laughs> when he said, because uh, Jeremy, Jeremy McGrath, the king oh, of Supercross, right. 72 wins. Jet Lawrence getting that first win and saying one down, 71 to go. Oh, uh, yes. And a lot of people took that as him saying, I'm going to knock off. Right, Well, right. of course, that should be his goal, yeah, shouldn't it? Should you want to be right. the best ever? Do I think that it was maybe could have been construed whether it was intended that way or not? as arrogant absolutely don't necessarily think you meant it that way there we go walker fowler on screen at the nine mile marker bryson neal already through this section and the next several sections of racetrack about three minutes ahead of on the race course uh bryson neal is of walker fowler but walker fowler again just ticking away another second place position it's looking like on the day today but this guy right here now down to really just a few corners uh, before he will come across. He's still got to come through the GBC Power Sports yep. pit stop area. Maybe, maybe he'll do a lock-in for us. Let's do it. Folks, if you're get down there lock in. and you're lining the, the, uh, right the on course, the pit board. yeah, somebody get a pit board that gets him to lock in. We need it on camera. We've been missing it the last couple of rounds. We did get the clock in at round number <laughs> one, but we've not seen it since. we Today we saw, we think, the nod in. We yes. saw the nod. Yeah. We saw the nod, but we want to see the lock-in. We've got one trip down uh, pro row here left, the GBC Tires pit stop area. No pit stop to be expected, but we're begging, we're pleading, we're hoping for a lock-in. <laughs> Let's get it. He is the fifth all-time winningest ATV rider in GNCC history. He tied Bob Sloan at the Ironman GNCC, and he starts off 2024. Three out of three races, he wins. Looking to make it his fourth here today. Got a long way to go, though, if he wants to catch up with Barry Hawk uh, with 49 wins on that all-time wins. And then a fella named Bill Balance and two guys still racing, Walker Fowler and Chris Bohr at the top of that list. But, uh, boy, yeah, generational talent. I don't, I don't know what else to say. And to have... Really, like, we watch Chris Borge do it. We walk, w watch Walker Fowler do it. And now we're watching Bryson Neal do it. It's pretty spectacular. Yeah, and it's and it's all been a relatively and short span you can go back to Bill Balance. Like, yeah. and we can just keep going with that. It's just one right after another. Uh, it's, it seems on the ATV side, uh, we've talked about this before, once they kind of get it figured out, it seemingly just becomes a little bit easier yeah. to keep doing it. it. It's such a process. It's such a program that it takes. Uh, oh, and there we go. I believe this is it. This is the final chicanes right here. He has actually made it through uh, the pit stop area already. So we didn't get to see the lock-in, but we are going to see a checkered flag we'll waving. We'll take it. And a big fist pump from the number one of Bryce Neal and Phoenix Racing Yamaha across the line with win number four of 2024. He stays perfect. Four for four to start the year. A fist bump to Zach Heron is going to be standing by for an interview as the fans. Rocket Boy is down there, the 044. Uh, I think that's what that shirt says, that jersey says it is. I like it. That's cool. That's cool. Getting a fist bump from Bryson Neal. And what a cool thing this is. I mean, how many other sports can you just, yeah. you know, your hero, the man, comes across the finish line, you walk up, give him a little fist bump, he's having a conversation with him. None of the crew over there yet, he's stopping his watch so he can get all his heart rate information. Now we're back at the 10-mile marker, 723 of Walker Fowler on that WFR GBC tires back machine, just pushing his way through the final miles, looking like what will likely be a second-place finish. We're looking back for the number five of Josh Merritt. Uh, now back to the Yamaha Racing Live drone here at the finish line, and those guys will be closing things out here in a matter of just a few minutes. So what do we get out of Walker Fowler post-race interview? Is it 
man, my start. <laughs> my start was bad. I got to have a better start. Yeah, I mean, I'll let him him speak to that. Sure. I think the, the start was a big part of it. But uh, looking back at this one, looking at the lap times, looking at the way things came together, um, I'm going to be honest. I, I think if you're Walker Fowler, uh, very encouraging rounds two and three. Okay. Yeah. This one, back to the drawing board. Okay. Uh, you know, a three-minute gap is is an eternity in GNCC yep. racing. And uh, even when he did get to the number two spot, you know, not really able to make any inroads there. Again, we don't know the story he'll tell us after sure. the race. Maybe just not quite feeling it, missing the setup, or maybe just saying, hey, that's a bridge too far, far to cross. I'm going to take my two for the day and, and not uh, – a lot of times that takes maturity to do that. Oh, yeah. Um, but I don't think this is going to be one he's going to be overly pumped on for sure. All right. Well, there you go. Well, we're waiting on him to check in with a completed lap number five as we are also waiting on Josh Merritt to check in, who we anticipate taking that three spot. McGill was in the fight early and uh, back in the number four position last time we saw him. Contin continue to watch here on the Yamaha Racing Live Drone. We'll have those post-race interviews uh, getting Bryce and Neil set up right now, the Bidwell Bullet. And it sounds like Zach Heron stands by with our winner, Bryce and Neil. Hey guys, yeah, the celebration has already begun down here at the finish line. Bryson, man, I mean, first of all, we had the big thing on the checklist, right? We needed the whole shot. You got it done. How good does it feel? You come around the first turn, you're not pulling a tear off, you're not eating roost. Finally got it done. It's amazing, you know. Um, I think it's been since 2020, so it's been years since I got a whole shot, and uh, it's what we've really been working on, working on because it's been one of my biggest uh, weaknesses I got in my program. And, uh, Man, the start's coming around. The first race, uh, you know, I, I butchered it, and I kind of got a little bit too excited, smashed that gas. But ever since then, we've second going to the woods, third going to the woods, whole shot today. So uh, we're, we're getting better. Dan at DASA, uh, they, they got those uh, got those webcams, that Wiseco pissed in that DASA head. Everything's firing all cylinders, so uh, super happy to have them and uh, be able to showcase this power and get this thing to the, to the whole shot and lead this thing wire to wire today. It was awesome. Absolutely. Now, you talk about getting a little too, too excited. Uh, you said these first couple of laps were almost overriding the course, and then about lap three or four, you really started to find your flow. Take us through that. Yeah, um, I mean, this track gets really rough in the past, and uh, don't get me wrong, the last two laps got really rough, but the first lap, it, it wasn't as rough as what I thought, and... There wasn't as much berms, and the all the all the rollers kind of got smashed in, and it was kind of a little bit like where he's overriding the bike a lot, and um, it was just a little bit funny. But laps two and three, the track kind of developed a little bit better. We everyone was kind of hitting the gas out of the berms at the same time. It's kind of getting lifts where you can kind of start to jump and kind of double your way here, keep your front end high, and uh, it, it, it started to get a real. Real fun a little bit, and then the last two laps, it uh, started to get classic Camp Coker, started to get real square edge, real choppy, big whoops, real deep, but uh, Jake Oval to Impact Solutions got these Elka shocks dialed. CST tires were uh, on point all day today, and uh, Yamaha 20th edition yfz 4 dr was working, so uh, we're super pumped to lead this thing, get the whole shot lead it wire to wire and um, uh, get another win four in a row. Feels great. Absolutely. Yeah, I was just about to ask four for four on the season. How are you feeling right now? Dude, on top of the world. You know, uh, last year we started out with three wins in a row. Then I kind of, like I told you yesterday, I kind of had two bet races that kind of fought me, didn't go my way. So uh, coming in today, um, really wanted to, you know, uh, get get a great ride for this place last year and, um, you know, try to get that fourth win that eluded me last year and I uh, was able to get it done and uh, had smooth sailing today and uh, the team was awesome with me and had a blast. There you go, guys. The Bidwell Bullet gets the bullet here from Camp Coker. Well, as uh, as the Bryce and Neil interview wraps up, second place checks in the 723, and uh, well, Johnny, that, that's our buddy right there, and I think the uh, the the eyes say it all right there. Yeah, he from Walker uh, Fowler. That looks like one whoop puppy there. I think he laid everything out there, and, and just not enough. Didn't have enough for the big number one of Bryce and Neil today. Uh, but still coming across the line in the number two spot. You know, again, opportunity to thank the sponsors to. Uh, kind of regather things and figure out what are we going to do to beat this guy and look at this second podium of the year third podium of his career i hope it's a very excited josh Perrin. it is you yeah, see the revs yeah. relieved excited and a very 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 solid ride for that young man right there the number five of josh Merritt across the line in the third place spot what a great performance yep. from him today yeah, Josh Merritt, what a storyline for this season uh, through four rounds of racing. A couple of podiums under his belt. 
And, uh, you know, as you, as you were mentioning there, what was it Florida with this, was the seventh place, I believe. No, nope, Georgia. Uh, Georgia, excuse me. Um, but still an incredible learning day. There is Adam McGill checking in there in the four spot. Um, Merritt doing, seems to be just doing all the right things. The gap between uh, Bryce and Neal and the rest of the pack, four minutes, 52 seconds back to Walker Fowler. Yeah. That was and not for lack of trying by Walker. Walker, you could tell by the body language, they're really pushing in the end. Yeah, that's uh, that's a big gap. These guys are going to have to go back to the drawing board. Bryson looked like he really just had everything go right for him today, but he put himself in those positions. Yeah. It doesn't happen by luck. It, it happens by preparation, good decisions, and good riding, and, and he did all that today. Man, what a ride. Just those five, or excuse me, four riders have checked in so far, so... Waiting to get a, uh, a word in with uh, Walker Fowler and Josh Merritt. You know, Mikey, I, I heard uh, Bryce and Neil mention the uh, 20th anniversary YFZ down there. I've got a whole rack of hats. Ooh, so yeah. I'm going to take it up to the podium let those guys toss them out. But I think we have uh, Jackson Burrell standing by with our second place finisher from today, Walker Fowler. Yeah, guys, I'm here with Walker Fowler, our second on the day. Walker, you've been off to a consistent season so far. Take us through today. Yeah, yeah, consistently getting our butt whooped. <laughs> um... Terrible start, and then, uh, oh, my God, that's how this whole day's been. Uh, luckily, Hunter Hart parked it sideways in the trail, uh, <clears throat> and I was in, like, 11th. I think that moved me up to 5th, and uh, just kind of rode around back there all day. I just I didn't have the machine. Uh, we just didn't have it, and I'm. it's kind of sad that it's poor as I rode to pull off a second place. Uh, we all have a lot of work to do. Well, Walker, you don't seem happy with the second places. It's went from I just want to get back there to now I'm not happy. I want to get up on the top spot. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, I, I just don't even feel like I deserve second place. I just I rode that poorly. My machine was that poor. Uh, apparently, everyone else felt the same way. So, like, I, we have so much soul searching to do right now. The whole class, man, uh, that number one machine's tough. And, uh, yeah, it's... I, I, my goal is to have fun, and uh, honestly, the last lap, there was so much chaos, and you just had to shake your head and be like, well, I went from having no fun to, like, this is a joke, so at this point, I'll just bring it home and, and see what's happening. There was just so much chaos, so that's all I can say. Walker, what's the plan going into round five? Any big changes? God, hope I don't get beat by four minutes again. That would be cool. All right, all right, everybody. That is your second overall, Walker Fowler. Ah, uh, there you go, folks. That's true emotion. And, you know, folks at home, keep in mind, you know, a lot of emotion running through these guys. They've just laid it out there on the line for, for two hours. Uh, you know, Walker clearly disgruntled yeah. with the performance today, not only of himself, but just clearly the gap to that number one spot. And it's frustrating. You know, when you ride so hard, you try so hard, you train so hard to get beat by that kind of a margin. Right. It can make you question things. But a multi-time champion and, and having ra won 74 races at this yeah. point, you know, I have no doubt that once the uh, sting kind of wears off this one, he'll say, all right, let's get back to work uh, and, and try to close that gap. And Jackson Burrell stands by with a third place finisher, Josh Merritt. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm here with Josh Merritt. Josh, another podium. How do you feel? Take us through today. Oh, man, that was a rough one. My, my hands are destroyed. I was sick coming into this weekend. And I'm uh, just glad to get up on this podium, man. It was, it was a long race. It felt like it took forever, but, you know, we got it done. And now we got a three-week break getting out of here to heal up and get back to 100%. Congratulations on the podium. How do you feel going into the next round? Any big changes? Um, I don't think so. I think everything's working really good. I mean, second podium of the year. I already doubled my podiums from <laughs> my whole career, so... I'm doing pretty good this year. I'm happy with my results, and uh, it was a good points day. Getting up on that podium, just uh, you get those bonus points, so it was a good one. All right, guys, that's your third place, Josh Merritt. Well, big congratulations to Josh Merritt on a third place. He's all smiles. He's feeling good, Johnny Gallagher. Uh, and like you were saying, I think he's doing all the right things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's funny, though, a tale of two stories yeah. there. You know, Josh Merritt just pumped to be on the podium. Walker Fowler absolutely just disgruntled with his day, with the finish, with the margin of victory. Uh, you know, it, it just goes to show expectations uh, can change your perception of results no doubt taking a look at that top 10 b neal stays perfect a perfect four for four to start the year can he make it an arby's five for five in a few weeks when we head to tennessee 
Uh, Walker Fowler second, Merritt third, and McGill Wilkin rounding out the top five. Glotta, Harold, Austin Abney, Ronnie Rush, and Jared McClure rounding out your top ten here at the FMF Camp Coker Bullet. Yeah. As we uh, take a look at your specialized race recap, the man, Bidwell Bullet, Bryson Neal, kind of felt like, man, the only thing I can't get right, I really want a whole shot today. He made it happen right up the gut and grabbed that Kanati Tires whole shot award and uh, led early in this one and, well, really never looked back. All the action pretty well behind Bryson Neal. Josh Merritt giving chase early, not quite able to match the pace, but spending almost the entire day running in the number two spot. Saw some great passing out here. That was the pass Walker Fowler put on Adam McGill, looking like Adam McGill kind of giving in that position, saying, hey, looks like you got a little more pace. Let's try to work together and get a little closer to Josh Merritt in that number two spot. And McGill had a pretty good day. I love the different line choice right here. And, ooh, you talk about maturity and respect between them. Five years ago, that would have been a different story. Now, not so much uh, with that mutual respect in play there, but fun to watch nonetheless. And, oh, heart, heartbreaker for Hunter Hart. Had him in the booth, love having him in the booth. Would much rather see him out there on the racetrack competing with these guys. Yeah, this was the battle over the number two spot. We saw Adam McGill lurking back there and forth, but Walker Fowler gets a run. Josh Merritt takes a look over, and similar to the situation with McGill, you see Fowler giving him the thumbs up there. Fowler having a little more pace. Josh opting to kind of let him have that position. And then uh, this was the, the passes again. Josh Merritt able to get back around Walker Fowler when he pitted for fuel. Adam McGill coming in there as well. And then as it came down in the stretch, Walker Fowler able to make the pass back again. These two spent a lot of time passing each other back and forth today, ultimately ending up in the number two and three spots behind this guy right here, the Bidwell Bullet, the big number one of Bryce Neal. You just can't say enough about his 2024 season. He set a pace that you can match. He's undefeated through four rounds of racing and making it look easy. Making it look easy and just the way he rides that machine just so smooth on that Phoenix Racing Yamaha. But that is gonna wrap things up for us here from the FMF Camp Coker Bullet round four. Bryson Neal stays perfect. Johnny, big takeaway from today real quick. <sighs> The gap. I mean, Bryce okay. Neal put an absolute. This may the, be the biggest win we've ever seen him take at four minutes and 52 seconds. So the last two rounds, things looking like they were really starting to tighten up yep. between Bryce Neal and Walker Fowler. Today, Walker or Bryce Neal just absolutely blows everyone, quite frankly, out of the water. These guys are gonna need to do some work in the next three weeks. But yep. we've got a big, we've got a big gap of time. We do. We've, we've got some time to go back to the drawing board, work on the bike setup, work on the fitness, do what they need to do, work on the mental <laughs> approach right. because they need to do something yes. to take a chip away from Bryce Neal's confidence. Cool. We'll be back with more Racer TV in a few weeks down or up in, I guess, compared to where you're at in Tennessee. Be sure to tune in. On behalf of Jackson Burrell, Zach Heron, Johnny Gallagher, our camera operators, JC, Matt, Josh, Billy, Leah, and Kirsten, our drone pilot, Gabe Scholl, our manager, Dan Reinhart, our spotter, Hollywood, our engineer in charge, Jordan McFadden, our director, Don Hampton, producer, Adam Gordon, our executive producer, Carrie Joe Russell. I'm Mikey Waynes. We'll see you at the races.